years, Bank West has earned long-term customer relationships by continually adapting to current customer needs while never losing touch with its South Dakota roots. With all our branches and our corporate offices firmly rooted in South Dakota, you can count on Bank West for solutions and service backed by hometown values. We've been there and we'll be there. Bank West. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Learn more at bankwest-sd.bank. Member FDIC. Your first car. It might not have been perfect, but that didn't matter. You loved it because you worked hard for it. You took care of it, and it took care of you, your friends, and maybe that someone special. And through it all, we were there working with you, for you, to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Farmers know crop insurance is essential for managing risk. It's also valuable for maximizing revenue. The crop insurance officers at Farm Credit Services of America have proprietary tools and expertise to deliver the personalized crop and revenue protection you need for the peace of mind you want. Nobody delivers crop insurance like this. Discover the difference by calling 800-884-FARM. Agriculture works here. Stop by your hometown grocer, County Fair, now in Winter and Platte. Same friendly faces with a brand new name. County Fair is a fourth generation family owned business based in South Dakota. They offer friendly service and the freshest food at great prices. County Fair carries premium certified Angus beef, locally grown produce and much more. Shop County Fair in Winter and Platte, the friendliest store in town. You've dreamed about the perfect house, a place to call your own, and a place to not only stretch out, but to grow. Auto Owners protects your house because to you, it's home. That's simple human sense. Ask Miller and Associates in Platte, South Dakota, if Auto Owners makes sense for you. Happy to help, man. I was just over there talking to myself anyway. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800 Kill Bugs. Schrader Electric and Control, located in Winter, is available for all your electrical service needs. With close to 40 years of experience, Brian and his crew can take care of all your electrical projects, residential or commercial. Schrader Electric works with new construction, remodels, and new additions. Call Brian at 605-840-8913 to get a quote or schedule your next electrical service. Schrader Electric and Control is a proud sponsor of the schools on the Live Ticket Network. The Insurance Center in Winter is an independent insurance agency affiliated with many fine companies representing all types of insurance. They're able to provide you with a no obligation comparison of your auto, home, business, crop, farm, life and health insurance needs. Since they have access to so many companies, they have the ability to offer you the best possible coverages at the most competitive rates. For all of your insurance needs, it's the Insurance Center in Winter, White River, Platte, Burke and Valentine. Being a part of a community means sharing the history and future of the people all around you. For 115 years, First Fidelity Bank has been doing just that, helping you get the most out of life by providing the services and tools you need, the conveniences and technology you want, and the friendly faces you expect. So you get everything you need right here in the place you call home. Now and for many years to come. First Fidelity Bank. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need when you need it. 
Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. The Winter Advocate is the exclusive newspaper of Trip County, serving Winter, Cologne, and the surrounding communities. Each Wednesday, you'll find the latest in state and local news, sports, job openings, classifieds, and all legal public notices. Call 842-1481 or stop down to 125 West 3rd to start your subscription today. Don't forget our deadlines, Friday at 5 p.m. for The Advocate and 12 on Fridays for The Rocket. The Winter Advocate is a proud partner of Winter Warriors Live and wish the Warriors and Lady Warriors success all this season. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 57,000 participants here in South Dakota who take part in high school sports or activities. Are you confident that you have the right products for your field? Contact Sherm Gucci with Hogemeyer, the right seed. Sherm will help you select the right products for your acres, corn, soybeans, alfalfa, and sorghum. If world-class genetics and a seed rep with an unwavering commitment is important to you, go with Sherm Gucci and Hogemeyer, the right seed. Phone 402-760-2172. Computers and more, located at 27786 311th Avenue, is obviously your computer sales and repair in winter. The more is so much other than you can imagine. We are your local outlet for Winter Warriors sports apparel. We do screen printing and embroidery for your purple and gold attire. Stop in and check out all our gear on hand for you to wear at the next game. Call us at 842-9057 and see how we can design your company logo on all types of clothing. And remember, thanks for keeping it local. Easy Entrees is a locally owned business that specializes in take and bake entrees. We feature an assortment of frozen ready to bake options for you to choose from. All of our recipes are made with care and fresh ingredients so that you can have a healthy and delicious meal allowing you to have more quality time with your family. Our menus change monthly. Just click on our banner ad at the sports ticket page to see our current monthly menu. Remember, dishing up dinner is as easy as picking up the phone and dialing 842-EASY for easy entrees. Producers, now's a great time to get your seed meters inspected so you're ready for spring planting. Right now, Grossenberg Implement, your John Deere dealer, with nine locations in South Dakota, Nebraska, and Wyoming, is offering $25 labor per row all month long. Contact one of Grossenberg Implement's service managers and schedule your planter seed meter inspection so it's ready for spring. Grossenberg Implement, where service is the other half of a great product. Go to Grossenberg.com for details. Give it off to CC, gliding to the basket, out to free J. No job is too big or small for the gang at h and Electric in winter. Whether it's a simple task around the house, remodel, new addition, or new construction, we provide residential, commercial, and industrial heating, cooling, or electrical work in winter and the surrounding area. We handle it all. Call 605-842-1117 for service or more information on your next project, big or small. h and Electric is your authorized dealer for train heating systems, too. Good luck in today's event. h and Electric is a proud supporter of all area student athletes and activities on Live Ticket TV. Winter Dental, located at 911 Golden Prairie Drive, is proud to provide Winter and the surrounding area with high-quality, high-tech, patient-centered dentistry. Dr. Brad and the entire staff, including hygienists Michaela Smith and Sierra Hansen, are honored to have the opportunity to serve the good people of Winter and the surrounding area with gentle, compassionate, and high-quality dental services. For information on all the services they can provide you or to make an appointment, please call 605-842-1793 or go to winterdentalclinic.com. At American Family Insurance, we help protect what you've achieved so you can fearlessly go after your dreams. For auto, home, business, and life, contact us today 
American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance, Life Mutual, Standard of Ohio, Wisconsin Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin, 53783. Agriculture is like no other business, which makes Farm Credit Services of America like no other lender. Owned by the farmers and ranchers we serve, our customers have a voice in how we work a stake in what we do, and share in our success. Discover a lender that works for you at Farm Credit Services of America. Eklund Tax Service, located at 323 Main Street in Gregory, South Dakota, is available for all your tax preparations. Mark Eklund has been a staple in the Gregory community for many years and wants to help you and your business have success by specializing in all types of bookkeeping. Eklund Tax can take care of any agricultural, retail, or personal bookkeeping or tax preparation. Call Mark at Eklund Tax today at 605-835-9665. Do you have the right financial advisor to help you reach your goals? Ameriprise Advisors can create a personalized goal-based plan to help you prepare for whatever life brings so you can feel more confident about your financial future. Call Wealth Partners, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, today at 605-842-3832. That's 605-842-3832. Office is located at 214 East 2nd Street, Winter, South Dakota, 57580. Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Winter Regional Healthcare Center is proud to sponsor coverage of Winter Warriors and Lady Warriors Athletics and activities on Winter Warriors Live. Best of luck in today's event here at Winter Regional Healthcare. We are committed to professional care with a personal touch at our locally owned hospital, clinic, and long-term care facility. For more information on services we provide, check out our website at winterregional.org. Winter Regional, proud to support the student athletes and activities. Honored to serve the families of South Central South Dakota and our community for over 60 65 years. Remember, professional care with the personal touch at Winter Regional Healthcare. Early seed season is here. Litaw Seed carries Hefty brand corn and beans for their genetics, technology, and treatments. Hefty's corn has been very drought tolerant and an excellent yielding. We also have Enlist and Extendiflex soybeans for your choice in herbicide. With Dynagro, we're at the top of the South Dakota field trials for their sunflowers and milo. And with Millbarn, we're the leader in grass, cover crop, and forages. Call 605-840-4591 for Litaw Seed, your source for corn to cover crops, soybeans to sunflowers, and all forages. That's 605-840-4591. We connect people. Have been for 100 years or so. How we get that done? Well, that won't always be the same. But why we connect people? Not in a million years is that ever going to change. We didn't build the communities that made South Dakota. No. We just brought them together. When it comes to vehicle maintenance, we know you have a lot of options, but it can be hard to find an honest, reliable auto repair shop. That's where we come in, Hometown Automotive, committed to providing our customers with honest, quality service at a reasonable price. We use years of training and experience to provide you with the best car care possible. Hometown does oil changes, tune-ups, and computer diagnostics. We sell tires, batteries, and Schaefer products. We install engines, trannies, starters, water pumps, brakes, and much more. Call us at 842-1722 and let our experience be your advantage. Manage. Meyer Ag is your Bex Hybrids seed dealer located in Winter, South Dakota. Meyer Ag is a family-owned company specializing in seed consulting and zone-based variable rate that services South Central South Dakota. Contact Trace Meyer at 605-842-5458 to learn more about Bex Hybrids and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Meyer Ag in Winter, South Dakota is a proud supporter of all youth athletics and activities. Hmm. Yeah. Another one. Hmm. Yep. Man, this town has changed. Yeah. About damn time.
Wow, Bill, you're walking so much better. What did you do? Well, I got so tired of the pain and nearly fell. And one of my friends recommended physical therapy at Winter Physical Therapy. And you know what? My back also stopped hurting. Huh. So how did you get started? My doctor wrote me a referral, but that's not always needed. Turns out you always have a choice where you want to go. So why did you choose Winter Physical Therapy? I love to support our locally owned small businesses. And quite frankly, they give great personalized care. Winter Physical Therapy. Exceptional care. Agrimax and West River Ag have been in the winter area for a combined total of nine years. We offer top-of-the-line services and inputs such as chemical, seed, fertilizer application, spraying, and agronomy services with a certified crop advisor on staff. We are a full-service business that is locally owned and operated. We look forward to continuing service to the ag community and cannot wait to help you with all your agricultural needs. Agrimax, shaping the future of ag. Shop local with Burke, Gregory, and Winter Building Centers, your hometown hardware stores specializing in everything from finding the right drill bit to building your dream home. The crews at the building centers take pride in customer service and are always available to help with any project, big or small. They offer top-of-the-line flooring and cabinetry, a large inventory of rental items, quality Pittsburgh paint, and so much more. Follow them on Facebook or shop online anytime at buildingcentersd.com. Whether you are pregnant or planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live the right nutrition, animal health, and record management is key to having a profitable cattle program. That's why you want to work with the people at FarmCo, who will take the time to learn your operation and help you grow your business. We are your full-service agriculture provider of feed, seed, animal health, farm, and ranching equipment built on terrific service. Get to know FarmCo locally owned and serving you in Chamberlain, Platte, Winter, and east of Kimball at the Paragon. Visit us online at farmcosd.com. FarmCo, Farm feeding, feeding your, your future. future. Explore the 2023 Lincoln Navigator at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. Every time you approach your Lincoln, you'll receive a re-carpet welcome. Twin turbocharged 3.5 V6 engine with auto start stop technology, you'll travel confidently with technology that meets all your needs. Now you can get the 2023 Navigator for 5.9% at 72 months. Stop in to see the full vehicle lineup at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. Capital City Ford in Pierce, South Dakota. As a small business owner, you learn to wear a lot of hats. The custodian hat, the IT hat, and well, the you should have called a professional hat. Auto Owners takes care of your business insurance, so you can take care of everything else. That's simple human sense. Ask Miller and Associates in Platte, South Dakota, if auto owners make sense for you. Shirley's Diner is located at 142 East 2nd Street in Winters, South Dakota. Come meet Martha 1 and Martha 2 and their friendly, courteous staff. Shirley's Diner is open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Breakfast is served all day and check out the Shirley's Diner Facebook page for all their daily lunch specials. All meals are made fresh and homemade every day. If you can't make it to the diner, they'll deliver. Just call 605-842-3903. Shirley's Diner serves customers from near and far and are a proud supporter of all school activities on Sports Ticket Live. It's easy to remember, there's nothing finer than Shirley's Diner. Elevate Agronomics is now added to Cal Basgro to our seed lineup. Along with brands like LG Seeds, Sakota, and Westbred, we can find the best hybrid to fit your farm. When it comes to your chemicals, we can finance many of your chemical needs for 1.9% while still offering full cash discounts. Elevate is also your precision planting dealer with a meter stand and an expert on staff to help get your row units and planting equipment ready for this upcoming season. Give us a call or check us out at ElevateAgronomics.com. Elevate Agronomics. Reach new heights. 
There's a lot of uncertainties in farming and ranching today, but one thing is certain. Statewide Ag Insurance in Chamberlain, Winter, and Mitchell are your crop and livestock insurance specialists. Statewide agents have a background in agriculture and work hard to provide growers and ranchers with risk management plans and insurance coverage that fits their business needs. From hail insurance, livestock revenue protection, to multi peril crop and revenue insurance, Statewide will help you with the right decisions. Statewide Ag Insurance in Chamberlain, Winter, and Mitchell. Locally owned, your dependable partner in crop and livestock protection and equal opportunity provider. Mead Lumber is 100% employee owned. Mead Lumber is your source for building materials. Whether your plans are for new construction or updating your existing home or barn, Mead Lumber provides the know how and the materials you need. Lumber, steel, roofing, siding, drywall, windows, doors, and so much more. Start to finish, Mead Lumber has what you need and want for your project. Mead Lumber is your hometown lumber yard. Stop in and see what Mead can do for you. 102 North Main Street in Winter. It might be time for you to strongly consider leasing bulls from Jorgensen Landing Cattle. Here's Cody. We'll get the bull to your place. Generally, we'll, we'll be able to get the bull picked up when you're done with them. So there's no reason for you to have a bull around your place for, you know, nine, ten months of the year that you don't need him. Um, he's just costing you money. He's eating feed. He's tearing up your corral. So so there's just no reason for it. Uh, it's, it's become very popular just, just in the fact that it's, it's convenient for people. Call 1-800-548-BULL. For over 130 years, Bank West has earned long-term customer relationships by continually adapting to current customer needs while never losing touch with its South Dakota roots. With all our branches and our corporate offices firmly rooted in South Dakota, you can count on Bank West for solutions and service backed by hometown values. We've been there and we'll be there. Bank West. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Learn more at bankwest-sd.bank. Member FDIC. Your first car. It might not have been perfect, but that didn't matter. You loved it because you worked hard for it. You took care of it and it took care of you, your friends, and maybe that someone special. And through it all, we were there working with you, for you, to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Farmers know crop insurance is essential for managing risk. It's also valuable for maximizing revenue. The crop insurance officers at Farm Credit Services of America have proprietary tools and expertise to deliver the personalized crop and revenue protection you need for the peace of mind you want. Nobody delivers crop insurance like this. Discover the difference by calling 800-884-FARM. Agriculture works here. Stop by your hometown grocer, County Fair, now in Winter and Platte. Same friendly faces with a brand new name. County Fair is a fourth generation family owned business based in South Dakota. They offer friendly service and the freshest food at great prices. County Fair carries premium certified Angus beef, locally grown produce and much more. Shop County Fair in Winter and Platte, the friendliest store in town. You've dreamed about the perfect house, a place to call your own, and a place to not only stretch out, but to grow. Auto Owners protects your house because to you, it's home. That's simple human sense. Ask Miller and Associates in Platte, South Dakota, if Auto Owners make sense for you. Happy to help, man. I was just over there talking to myself anyway. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800-KILL-BUGS. 
Schrader Electric and Control, located in Winter, is available for all your electrical service needs. With close to 40 years of experience, Brian and his crew can take care of all your electrical projects, residential or commercial. Schrader Electric works with new construction, remodels, and new additions. Call Brian at 605-840-8913 to get a quote or schedule your next electrical service. Schrader Electric and Control is a proud sponsor of the schools on the Live Ticket Network. The Insurance Center in Winter is an independent insurance agency affiliated with many fine companies representing all types of insurance. They're able to provide you with a no-obligation comparison of your auto, home, business, crop, farm, life and health insurance needs. Since they have access to so many companies, they have the ability to offer you the best possible coverages at the most competitive rates. For all of your insurance needs, it's the Insurance Center in Winter, White River, Platte, Burke and Valentine. Being a part of a community means sharing the history and future of the people all around you. For 115 years, First Fidelity Bank has been doing just that, helping you get the most out of life by providing the services and tools you need, the conveniences and technology you want, and the friendly faces you expect. So you get everything you need right here in the place you call home, now and for many years to come. First Fidelity Bank. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. The Winter Advocate is the exclusive newspaper of Tripp County, serving Winter, Cologne, and the surrounding communities. Each Wednesday, you'll find the latest in state and local news, sports, job openings, classifieds, and all legal public notices. Call 842-1481 or stop down to 125 West 3rd to start your subscription today. Don't forget our deadlines, Friday at 5 p.m. for The Advocate and 12 on Fridays for The Rocket. The Winter Advocate is a proud partner of Winter Warriors Live and wish the Warriors and Lady Warriors success all this season. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 57,000 participants here in South Dakota who take part in high school sports or activities. Are you confident that you have the right products for your field? Contact Sherm Gucci with Hogemeyer, the right seed. Sherm will help you select the right products for your acres, corn, soybeans, alfalfa, and sorghum. If world-class genetics and a seed rep with an unwavering commitment is important to you, go with Sherm Gucci and Hogemeyer, the right seed. Phone 402-760-2172. Computers and more, located at 27786 311th Avenue, is obviously your computer sales and repair in winter. The more is so much other than you can imagine. We are your local outlet for Winter Warriors sports apparel. We do screen printing and embroidery for your purple and gold attire. Stop in and check out all our gear on hand for you to wear at the next game. Call us at 842-9057 and see how we can design your company logo on all types of clothing. And remember, thanks for keeping it local. Easy Entrees is a locally owned business that specializes in take and bake entrees. We feature an assortment of frozen ready to bake options for you to choose from. All of our recipes are made with care and fresh ingredients so that you can have a healthy and delicious meal allowing you to have more quality time with your family. Our menus change monthly. Just click on our banner ad at the sports ticket page to see our current monthly menu. Remember, dishing up dinner is as easy as picking up the phone and dialing 842-EASY for easy entrees. Producers, now's a great time to get your seed meters inspected so you're ready for spring planting. 
Right now, Grossenberg Implement, your John Deere dealer, with nine locations in South Dakota, Nebraska, and Wyoming, is offering $25 labor per row all month long. Contact one of Grossenberg Implement's service managers and schedule your planter seed meter inspection so it's ready for spring. Grossenberg Implement, where service is the other half of a great product. Go to Grossenberg.com for details. Give it off to see gliding the basket out to free Jay Hayes. Good. And Eric Lemon wants to stop the music. No job is too big or small for the gang at h and Electric in winter. Whether it's a simple task around the house, remodel, new addition, or new construction, we provide residential, commercial, and industrial heating, cooling, or electrical work in winter and the surrounding area. We handle it all. Call 605-842-1117 for service or more information on your next project, big or small. h and Electric is your authorized dealer for train heating systems, too. Good luck in today's event. h and Electric is a proud supporter of all area student athletes and activities on Live Ticket TV. Winter Dental, located at 911 Golden Prairie Drive, is proud to provide Winter and the surrounding area with high-quality, high-tech, patient-centered dentistry. Dr. Brad and the entire staff, including hygienists Michaela Smith and Sierra Hansen, are honored to have the opportunity to serve the good people of Winter and the surrounding area with gentle, compassionate, and high-quality dental services. For information on all the services they can provide you or to make an appointment, please call 605-842-1793 or go to winterdentalclinic.com. At American Family Insurance, we help protect what you've achieved so you can fearlessly go after your dreams. For auto, home, business, and life, contact us today. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance, Life Mutual Standard of Ohio and Wisconsin Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin, 53783. Agriculture is like no other business, which makes Farm Credit Services of America like no other lender. Owned by the farmers and ranchers we serve, our customers have a voice in how we work, a stake in what we do, and share in our success. Discover a lender that works for you at Farm Credit Services of America. Eklund Tax Service, located at 323 Main Street in Gregory, South Dakota, is available for all your tax preparations. Mark Eklund has been a staple in the Gregory community for many years and wants to help you and your business have success by specializing in all types of bookkeeping. Eklund Tax can take care of any agricultural, retail, or personal bookkeeping or tax preparation. Call Mark at Eklund Tax today at 605-835-9665. Do you have the right financial advisor to help you reach your goals? Ameriprise Advisors can create a personalized, goal-based plan to help you prepare for whatever life brings so you can feel more confident about your financial future. Call Wealth Partners, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, today at 605-842-3832. That's 605-842-3832. Office is located at 214 East 2nd Street, Winter, South Dakota, 57580. Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Winter Regional Healthcare Center is proud to sponsor coverage of Winter Warriors and Lady Warriors Athletics and activities on Winter Warriors Live. Best of luck in today's event here at Winter Regional Healthcare. We are committed to professional care with a personal touch at our locally owned hospital, clinic, and long-term care facility. For more information on services we provide, check out our website at winterregional.org. Winter Regional, proud to support the student athletes and activities. Honored to serve the families of South Central South Dakota and our community for over 60 65 years. Remember, professional care with the personal touch at Winter Regional Healthcare. Early seed season is here. Litaw Seed carries Hefty brand corn and beans for their genetics, technology, and treatments. Hefty's corn has been very drought tolerant and an excellent yielding. We also have Enlist and Extendiflex soybeans for your choice in herbicide. With Dynagro, we're at the top of the South Dakota field trials for their sunflowers and milo. And with Millbarn, we're the leader in grass, cover crop, and forages. 
Call 605-840-4591 for Litas Seed, your source for corn to cover crops, soybeans to sunflowers, and all forages. That's 605-840-4591. We connect people. Have been for 100 years or so. How we get that done? Well, that won't always be the same. But why we connect people? Not in a million years is that ever going to change. We didn't build the communities that made South Dakota. No. We just brought them together. When it comes to vehicle maintenance, we know you have a lot of options, but it can be hard to find an honest, reliable auto repair shop. That's where we come in, Hometown Automotive, committed to providing our customers with honest, quality service at a reasonable price. We use years of training and experience to provide you with the best car care possible. Hometown does oil changes, tune-ups, and computer diagnostics. We sell tires, batteries, and Schaefer products. We install engines, trannies, starters, water pumps, brakes, and much more. Call us at 842-1722 and let our experience be your advantage. Manage. Meyer Ag is your Bex Hybrids seed dealer located in Winters, South Dakota. Meyer Ag is a family-owned company specializing in seed consulting and zone-based variable rate that services South Central South Dakota. Contact Trace Meyer at 605-842-5458 to learn more about Bex Hybrids and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Meyer Ag in Winters, South Dakota is a proud supporter of all youth athletics and activities. Hmm. Yeah. Another one. Hmm. Yep. Man, this town has changed. Yeah. About damn time. Wow, Bill, you're walking so much better. What did you do? Well, I got so tired of the pain and nearly fell. And one of my friends recommended physical therapy at Winter Physical Therapy. And you know what? My back also stopped hurting. Huh. So how did you get started? My doctor wrote me a referral, but that's not always needed. Turns out you always have a choice where you want to go. So why did you choose Winter Physical Therapy? I love to support our locally owned small businesses. And quite frankly, they give great personalized care. Winter Physical Therapy. Exceptional care. Agrimax and West River Ag have been in the winter area for a combined total of nine years. We offer top-of-the-line services and inputs such as chemical, seed, fertilizer application, spraying, and agronomy services with a certified crop advisor on staff. We are a full-service business that is locally owned and operated. We look forward to continuing service to the ag community and cannot wait to help you with all your agricultural needs. Agrimax, shaping the future of ag. Shop local with Burke, Gregory, and Winter Building Centers, your hometown hardware stores specializing in everything from finding the right drill bit to building your dream home. The crews at the building centers take pride in customer service and are always available to help with any project, big or small. They offer top-of-the-line flooring and cabinetry, a large inventory of rental items, quality Pittsburgh paint, and so much more. Follow them on Facebook or shop online anytime at buildingcentersd.com. Whether you are pregnant or planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live. The right nutrition, animal health, and record management is key to having a profitable cattle program. That's why you want to work with the people at FarmCo, who will take the time to learn your operation and help you grow your business. We are your full-service agriculture provider of feed, seed, animal health, farm, and ranching equipment built on terrific service. Get to know FarmCo locally owned and serving you in Chamberlain, Platte, Winter, and east of Kimball at the Paragon. Visit us online at FarmCoSD.com. FarmCo, Farm feeding, feeding your, your future. future. Explore the 2023 Lincoln Navigator at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. 
Every time you approach your Lincoln, you'll receive a re-carpet welcome. Twin turbocharged 3.5 V6 engine with auto start stop technology, you'll travel confidently with technology that meets all your needs. Now you can get the 2023 Navigator for 5.9% at 72 months. Stop in to see the full vehicle lineup at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. Capital City Ford in Pierce, South Dakota. As a small business owner, you learn to wear a lot of hats. The custodian hat, the IT hat, and well, the you should have called a professional hat. Auto Owners takes care of your business insurance, so you can take care of everything else. That's simple human sense. Ask Miller and Associates in Platte, South Dakota, if Auto Owners makes sense for you. Shirley's Diner is located at 142 East 2nd Street in Winters, South Dakota. Come meet Martha 1 and Martha 2 and their friendly, courteous staff. Shirley's Diner is open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Breakfast is served all day and check out the Shirley's Diner Facebook page for all their daily lunch specials. All meals are made fresh and homemade every day. If you can't make it to the diner, they'll deliver. Just call 605-842-3903. Shirley's Diner serves customers from near and far and are a proud supporter of all school activities on Sports Ticket Live. It's easy to remember, there's nothing finer than Shirley's Diner. Elevate Agronomics is now added to Cal Basgro to our seed lineup. Along with brands like LG Seeds, Sakota, and Westbred, we can find the best hybrid to fit your farm. When it comes to your chemicals, we can finance many of your chemical needs for 1.9% while still offering full cash discounts. Elevate is also your precision planting dealer with a meter stand and an expert on staff to help get your row units and planting equipment ready for this upcoming season. Give us a call or check us out at elevateagronomics.com. Elevate Agronomics. Reach new heights. There's a lot of uncertainties in farming and ranching today, but one thing is certain. Statewide Ag Insurance in Chamberlain, Winter, and Mitchell are your crop and livestock insurance specialists. Statewide agents have a background in agriculture and work hard to provide growers and ranchers with risk management plans and insurance coverage that fits their business needs. From hail insurance, livestock revenue protection, to multi parallel crop and revenue insurance, Statewide will help you with the right decisions. Statewide Ag Insurance in Chamberlain, Winter, and Mitchell. Locally owned, your dependable partner in crop and livestock protection and equal opportunity providers. Provider. Mead Lumber is 100% employee owned. Mead Lumber is your source for building materials. Whether your plans are for new construction or updating your existing home or barn, Mead Lumber provides the know-how and the materials you need. Lumber, steel, roofing, siding, drywall, windows, doors, and so much more. Start to finish, Mead Lumber has what you need and want for your project. Mead Lumber is your hometown lumber yard. Stop in and see what Mead can do for you. 102 North Main Street in Winter. It might be time for you to strongly consider leasing bulls from Jorgensen Landing Cattle. Here's Cody. We'll get the bull to your place. Generally, we'll, we'll be able to get the bull picked up when you're done with them. So there's no reason for you to have a bull around your place for, you know, nine, ten months of the year that you don't need him. Um, he's just costing you money. He's eating feed. He's tearing up your corral. So so there's just no reason for it. Uh, it's, it's become very popular just, just in the fact that it's, it's convenient for people. Call 1-800-548-BULL. For over 130 years, Bank West has earned long-term customer relationships by continually adapting to current customer needs while never losing touch with its South Dakota roots. With all our branches and our corporate offices firmly rooted in South Dakota, you can count on Bank West for solutions and service backed by hometown values. We've been there and we'll be there. Bank West. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Learn more at bankwest-sd.bank. Member FDIC. Your first car. It might not have been perfect, but that didn't matter. You loved it because you worked hard for it. You took care of it and it took care of you, your friends, and maybe that someone special. And through it all, we were there working with you, for you, to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Farmers know crop insurance is essential for managing risk. It's also valuable for maximizing revenue. 
The crop insurance officers at Farm Credit Services of America have proprietary tools and expertise to deliver the personalized crop and revenue protection you need for the peace of mind you want. Nobody delivers crop insurance like this. Discover the difference by calling 800-884-FARM. Agriculture works here. Stop by your hometown grocer, County Fair, now in Winter and Platte. Same friendly faces with a brand new name. County Fair is a fourth generation family owned business based in South Dakota. They offer friendly service and the freshest food at great prices. County Fair carries premium certified Angus beef, locally grown produce and much more. Shop County Fair in Winter and Platte, the friendliest store in town. You've dreamed about the perfect house, a place to call your own, and a place to not only stretch out, but to grow. Auto Owners protects your house because to you, it's home. That's simple human sense. Ask Miller and Associates in Platte, South Dakota, if Auto Owners makes sense for you. Happy to help, man. I was just over there talking to myself anyway. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800 Kill Bugs. Schrader Electric and Control, located in Winter, is available for all your electrical service needs. With close to 40 years of experience, Brian and his crew can take care of all your electrical projects, residential or commercial. Schrader Electric works with new construction, remodels, and new additions. Call Brian at 605-840-8913 to get a quote or schedule your next electrical service. Schrader Electric and Control is a proud sponsor of the schools on the Live Ticket Network. The Insurance Center in Winter is an independent insurance agency affiliated with many fine companies representing all types of insurance. They're able to provide you with a no-obligation comparison of your auto, home, business, crop, farm, life and health insurance needs. Since they have access to so many companies, they have the ability to offer you the best possible coverages at the most competitive rates. For all of your insurance needs, it's the Insurance Center in Winter, White River, Platte, Burke and Valentine. Being a part of a community means sharing the history and future of the people all around you. For 115 years, First Fidelity Bank has been doing just that, helping you get the most out of life by providing the services and tools you need, the conveniences and technology you want, and the friendly faces you expect. So you get everything you need right here in the place you call home. Now and for many years to come. First Fidelity Bank. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. The Winter Advocate is the exclusive newspaper of Tripp County, serving Winter, Cologne, and the surrounding communities. Each Wednesday, you'll find the latest in state and local news, sports, job openings, classifieds, and all legal public notices. Call 842-1481 or stop down to 125 West 3rd to start your subscription today. Don't forget our deadlines, Friday at 5 p.m. for The Advocate and 12 on Fridays for The Rocket. The Winter Advocate is a proud partner of Winter Warriors Live and wish the Warriors and Lady Warriors success all this season. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 57,000 participants here in South Dakota who take part in high school sports or activities. 
like products for your field? Contact Sherm Gucci with Hogemeyer, the right seed. Sherm will help you select the right products for your acres, corn, soybeans, alfalfa, and sorghum. If world-class genetics and a seed rep with an unwavering commitment is important to you, go with Sherm Gucci and Hogemeyer, the right seed. Phone 402-760-2172. Computers and more, located at 27786 311th Avenue, is obviously your computer sales and repair in winter. The more is so much other than you can imagine. We are your local outlet for Winter Warriors sports apparel. We do screen printing and embroidery for your purple and gold attire. Stop in and check out all our gear on hand for you to wear at the next game. Call us at 842-9057 and see how we can design your company logo on all types of clothing. And remember, thanks for keeping it local. Easy Entrees is a locally owned business that specializes in take and bake entrees. We feature an assortment of frozen ready to bake options for you to choose from. All of our recipes are made with care and fresh ingredients so that you can have a healthy and delicious meal allowing you to have more quality time with your family. Our menus change monthly. Just click on our banner ad at the sports ticket page to see our current monthly menu. Remember, dishing up dinner is as easy as picking up the phone and dialing 842-EASY for easy entrees. Producers, now's a great time to get your seed meters inspected so you're ready for spring planting. Right now, Grossenberg Implement, your John Deere dealer, with nine locations in South Dakota, Nebraska, and Wyoming, is offering $25 labor per row all month long. Contact one of Grossenberg Implement's service managers and schedule your planter seed meter inspection so it's ready for spring. Grossenberg Implement, where service is the other half of a great product. Go to Grossenberg.com for details. Give it off to CC, gliding to the basket, out to free J. No job is too big or small for the gang at h and Electric in winter. Whether it's a simple task around the house, remodel, new addition, or new construction, we provide residential, commercial, and industrial heating, cooling, or electrical work in winter and the surrounding area. We handle it all. Call 605-842-1117 for service or more information on your next project, big or small. h and Electric is your authorized dealer for train heating systems, too. Good luck in today's event. h and Electric is a proud supporter of all area student athletes and activities on Live Ticket TV. Winter Dental, located at 911 Golden Prairie Drive, is proud to provide Winter and the surrounding area with high-quality, high-tech, patient-centered dentistry. Dr. Brad and the entire staff, including hygienists Michaela Smith and Sierra Hansen, are honored to have the opportunity to serve the good people of Winter and the surrounding area with gentle, compassionate, and high-quality dental services. For information on all the services they can provide you or to make an appointment, please call 605-842-1793 or go to winterdentalclinic.com. At American Family Insurance, we help protect what you've achieved so you can fearlessly go after your dreams. For auto, home, business, and life, contact us today. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance, Life Mutual, Standard of Ohio, and Wisconsin Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin, 53783. Thank you. 
Test one, two. We believe we've got the audio fixed, corrected, everything ready to roll. I'm going to check on the other side to make sure that I've got audio. Give me about 30 seconds here and I'll get those matches back up. Test one, two. Test one, two. How's this sound now? Huh. Test one, two, one, two. All right, we're going to double check this one more time to make sure I've got audio before we try playing around with this.
Loini says, I have audio. She is my eye in the sky, so we're going to roll. A, uh, maybe it's just the earbud again. I'm in the wrong one. We'll find out. Check one, two. Check one, two. Guess what, Loini? I had the wrong earbud in. One is blown out. We are underway. Late. Me and the tournament. The tournament was scheduled to start at 10 a.m., Guys started at 10.35, and me, I'm doing customer service and rolling around here. I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera shots to match. You've got track wrestling, as you can see, up above. It indicates north mat, south mat, and then what's going on in the auxiliary gym. You can go watch that also. Need to quickly just flip my cameras around here. I'll put the north mat over on the north side. So you can look up and keep track of that score. And then our south mat over there. And uh, I've done it in the background. You will get to see the smooth transition as we flip things around. Kind of smooth. So over on mat won the north mat that is hot springs bison's micah birchfield taking on avery williams we're at the 113 pound weight class birchfield will get the fall custers trey weiss at 120 taking on morgan hood the eighth grader out of gregory he uh, leads two to one I heard a rumor last night trey weiss looking to bump up to 126 maybe as we get closer to regionals Keep an eye on him as he's got a victory over top-ranked Max Brozik up in a duel in Chamberlain by a score of 3-1, to one, a takedown at the buzzer, the difference in that one. Tyler Trance at 113 on Matt, the North Matt, taking on Lucas Nelson, an 8th grader out of Sunshine Bible Academy. In the back room right now, the auxiliary gym, if you have that pulled up, Gus Tobin of winner, taking on Corbin Palsma of Bonhomme Avon. Palsma, a freshman, 17 and 10, leads 2 to 0 over Tobin. Trant quickly out 4 1, now looking for the fall. And I'm going to leave you here with this, and I'm going to jump to Team Viewer. I got a customer service call I'm going to help with real quick. Modern technology, I can go from winner, and not that any of you really care about that. I'm going to jump on, and I'm going to be jumping on a unit halfway across the state to make sure that they get up and rolling also. We'll keep team viewer refreshed. Hudson Peters coming out on that south mat. He'll take on Trevor Lashawich of Sunshine Bible Academy after the victory. I'm actually jumping on a mat in Iowa. Is Trant picks up the victory.
All right, we're going to focus over here as that is taken care of. Lance Dewey here on the North Mat at 120. Taking on Devin Bauman of Sunshine Bible Academy. Leads that match 10 to 0. Hudson Peters leading 5 to 3 over Trevor Lashowich over at 120 on the South Mat in the Auxiliary Mat. Here on the north mat, Stanley County Buffalo Landon Dame is on the mat with Xavier Ungi of Andy Central. Bame leads Ungi uh, by a score of 2-0. to zero. Hudson Peters has went up 9-4 to four on that north mat. And in the back right now, Hot Springs Bison's Dean Nathan, 7th grader, 3 and 10, has taken on Colton Preheim of Parker, the sophomore, who is 11 and 15. Looking at early results, um, jumping all the way back. We're going to drag it back for you. Yeah, Luini, but I make too much money. This costs the equipment never, equipment never fails. If you want, read some of the posts, a little frustrated right now. I'm going to cut. I know my voice is cutting out. It's partially my sickness. And uh, other, it'll come and go, and that's the way this is operated. And nothing I can do about it. Um, Going to be a fall on the north end. Beam with the fall. Leading 6-2. to two, He gets the fall. Hudson Peters starts down here in the third period with that 9-4 to four lead. And uh, trying to get a reversal. Does. Takes an 11-4 to four lead. Preheim leading Nathan back in the auxiliary gym by a score of 2-0. to zero. <clears throat> And Karsten Lotek going to come out and take the mat. He's taking on Oakley Menzel of Phillip. Menzel, a nice season, 9-14 and 14 for the freshman. Just running into a senior in Lotek who's been doing it for a long time. A couple quick takedowns. He now leads by a score of 4-1. to one.
Low Tech leading 7-1. to one. Huddy Peters, as he's known, now leading by a score of 16-4. to four. <clears throat> and in the back auxiliary, Jim Preheim. Leading by a score of four to one. Gonna get a charger on the phone. There's going to be a fall by low tech. All right, let's get back to uh, our events. As uh, we are doing all kinds of things across the state today. It's crazy. Uh, we put on 5,000 productions a year across the state. <laughs> this is one of my favorites, the Winter Quarterback Club Invitational. On the north mat right now, Gage Anderson, stud at 132, leads by a score of 4 to 2 over Lee Deadwood's Peyton Percy. It's going to get the fall. Over on that south mat, Weston Birma, eighth grader out of Bonhomme Avon, and I know I'm cracking up right now, folks. I, the audio, and I apologize. Weston Birma leads by a score of two to zero. In the Ox Gym, Luke Harris, Tucker Bow, 22 seconds into that match. Here on the North Mat, Holden Looper of Hot Springs and Eli Ekroth of Gregory. Eli promised him I would do this. We're gonna call him Hat Head. Dude wears a baseball hat everywhere he goes. Said if he could wear one out onto the mat, he would. And he goes, tell people, um, Take a look at my hat head ring out here on when I'm on the mat on the north mat. So Eli Eckroth at Gregory, there is your moment to shine. Well, you can do it out on the mat also. But I promised people I would uh, visit about you and your baseball hat. <laughs> really a good kid. Had a fun time talking to him. Had a great time talking to... Um, a lot of the kids from Philip last night. Jace Blasius. Uh, didn't wrestle last night. Didn't win or gets the victory on criteria over a great Philip team. Doesn't look like Burke Blasius is wrestling tonight either, today. I think uh, he may be. I'm going to go take a peek. That is interesting if Burke's taking the day off. 
you just don't normally see Burt take that day off. And Burt, Francie, tell him, quit calling me Mr. Brozick. What a great kid. I've given him full permission to call me Jody when we're having a conversation. Him, Jason, and I having some fun times along with the coaching staff from Philip this morning as I was running around trying to get things set up. And now I'm trying to get over to the tournament on my phone so I can take a look at brackets. I haven't even looked at the brackets yet for this tournament. As always, I would tell you, go to Track Wrestling, click Browse, go to Tournaments, and when you get to the functions, hit Search Events. You can just type Winner into that first event line instead of searching by state, and it'll pull up the Winner Invitational, also known as the Quarterback Club Invitational. And then you can uh, follow along on the, on the dashboard, which I've put up on your screen for you, along with Team Points, but... You can also go into the brackets and look who is wrestling where. Burke is going to take the day off, and uh, with that, that uh, creates Ryder Bailey as the top seed at 175. Shakes it up a little bit. Kellen Brozick, the two seed. Uh, Colton Volchek, the three seed. Connor even the four seed. Ethan Hess, the five seed. With Burke sitting out, all those kids move up a little bit. Blazius boys, Chase and Burke taking the day off, being spectators. If I get a chance, I should get Burke up here on the mic. Chase may be, I wouldn't have said this a couple years ago, Chase may be a little bit more outgoing than Burke. Burke really reserved. It's funny, when I talk to him, he's such a competitor, has seen such great success, but very modest, as all the Blazius boys are. Jace being the youngest, maybe a little more outgoing. I could see him getting up here on the mic. <laughs> Hathead Eckroth, Eli, leading 5 nothing. Luke Olson and Jeremiah Freeman. Olson of Mobridge Pollock, the Tiger, taking on Freeman of Parker, the Pheasant. That one scoreless, 26 seconds and ticking into that first period. And Tucker Bow, such a stud. You know, we had a great article over on 605 Sports about some of the, um, never an impairment, I don't want to say that, but challenges that these kids have all across the state and to see them overcoming them. Tucker, um, a great article on his hearing capabilities and how he's overcome that. It's been fun to watch Tucker Bowl just roll, not even flinching. Probably good because he doesn't have to listen to me. He leads 14 to 1. That is back in the auxiliary gym. Eli Eckroth now with a reversal. Double check that before I say reversal. It was a takedown. And now he's got that cradle for three. So, one more customer service call, and I think we got everybody rolling across the state. You do that, do the math, um, at 4,000 events over the course, 4,500 to 5,000 over the course of the year. It's about 100 events a week. I think there's more than that going out, quite honestly. Happy to bring you coverage of these high school athletics, whether it's through live streaming or through the articles, the, the interviews, the conversations, letting you get to know some of these kids in a different way other than just, oh, well, he's that kid that went out and ran for, or threw for 3,000 yards, ran for 1,000, or had 50 wins. You get to know them a little bit more personally, personally, we hope, through this live video coverage and through these conversations. I know Ryan Deal, Rich Winter, Rodney Haas, Trey Call here shooting photos today of this tournament. Boston Moorhart now on with us up in the Brookings area. Adding to our staff all the time. If you'd like to be a sports stringer with 605 Sports, get a hold of uh, Ryan Deal 
at ryan.deal at sportsticket.tv or rich.winter at sportsticket.tv. The more the better. I mean, there are so many good souls, for the most part, all across our land. We need to bring these stories to everybody. Eckroth leading 12-0 over Looper. Freeman, 2-0 lead over Olsen. And, it, and Riley Scott at 132 in the back room now leading Bo Van Wy of Stanley County, 4-0. I talked about our coverage, whether it's through live streaming or stories. Talked about the kids, the coaches, the parents that I've met incredible and some of the fans I know I mentioned Lawaney here just a little bit ago we've got some very loyal fans to their schools that their kids have moved on they're now actually probably grandparents in a lot of cases and uh, it's just wild that they're still following along staying in touch with their neighbors kids their classmates kids it's just fun just fun. Give me one second here, folks.
All right, let's go ahead and update everybody on what's going on here. I think we've gotten two or three people up and going since I took that momentary break. At 144 on the north mat, it's a really good match. Tanner Vandervorst of Potter County leading Devin Kutka. Over on your south mat, Burt Gregory Storms, Avery Singleman, leading Jed Blair by a score of 7-4. to four. In the auxiliary mat, we just flipped over to Phillips, Joe Trask, and Carlin Hopkins. Team scores right now. Coster out in front. I was going to get you all the way caught up on matches when we were at 113, but somehow the day has slipped away and we are all the way out to 144 in every on every single mat. I'm going to just go ahead and scroll these through. There we go. Give Singleman the victory over Jed Blair over on the south mat. We'll label those for you now just so you can kind of see those. I'm going to leave the auxiliary gym up in the background here so you can also see. I don't have that um, up in my background over in the ox gym. It's a full view mat of the ox gym, which is kind of cool. I know some of our writers like that better than uh, my split view, but I, it's tough to create multiple streams. I can get two up with two sets of equipment, but then I'd have to have a third one to get that third one, I believe. So I know there's a way to do it, not going to do it. With our system today, just ran out of things as we're always experimenting. One of the things that uh, I will show you, I can zoom in on each of these individual mats. That may be what I try to do is put somebody on the PTZ and kind of jump around when it is somebody you want to see a big moment on. Oh, she's zooming really fast. Going to get a fall over here on the north mat. And I'm going to go back to labeling these really quick. I'll put a text up, text screen. Anyhow, I want to get back to something I was saying earlier. There are so many great fans out there. Uh, I can't name all the different people that have been following along, that have been patient with us as we continue to try and bring in you coverage of all these events. Um, Lewini Hassel, Bolander Hassel, as I've talked about from the winter area. I think of Francie out in Wall. Watching the blaziest boys um, go on and on and list all of these great, great fans that love these kids. And it does become that relationship. What happens, and we've always strived to make that part of what we do, is allow you to, even when your kids have moved on, stand stay in contact with your community uh, your your neighbors your, the people you go to church with the people you work with um, for me there was a gap and I'm, I know I'm rambling at this point but 
between the graduation of my oldest kids to now my younger kids, there was a huge window in there for competitive sports. But staying involved um, with this, I think I've gotten to know, know quite a few of the families across South Dakota, how many kids they have, who their brothers are, their sisters are, sometimes same last name, sometimes different because of the sisters moving on to and forming their own family with another individual. But it's been fun, and I think a lot of people enjoy that. We know there's complications um, with what we do. Uh, compare the streams to 12 years ago to the, what they are today, the advancement has been rapid. Technology moves at a blistering pace. There's going to be a pin over on the north mat by Riley Roberts of Wagner. He's 24 and 5 with that victory in the season. He beat defeat Bo Stone. Ash Kaiser, or is this Abe coming out? Taking on Massa here in a second. We'll clarify that is Abe at uh, 150. Four winner taking on Traden Massa of Burt Gregory. Over on your south mat, Brock Kotelik, the Bonhomme Avon Cavalier, going to pick up a fall. Up next, Riken Oral, 25 and 9 sophomore for winner, taking on Jaden Bolt of Bonhomme Avon. Keller Peterson and Kai Rush at 150 are in the Augs gym. They are just 30 seconds into that match. You can see Gus Bartles and Steven Nielsen on deck. But back to that blistering pace. Think of all the changes technolo technologically that have happened in your personal lives. I go back to cell phones. 1998, nobody believed that uh, they would ever own more than one cell phone. And you'd pay $50 for 60 minutes a month. To today, unlimited access to data, text, phone at a cost of now $25, $30 a month, becoming more affordable all the time. We're always chasing technology. and It's funny, I mentioned it earlier, maybe a little bit frustrated at the moment, but you as fans, expectations have went through the roof. And we're trying to keep up with that pace. And it's fun, it's a challenge, but... We also know that we got to continue to bring you more and more and more as much as we possibly can. And when you add more to the plate, it becomes just a little more complicated, a little more challenging. But uh, it's fun. The pursuits, you, you think you're pursuing excellence at one point, mastering what you do now until you get to the next season and everything's changed. You got to get better here. You're not even perfect where you were. Now you're chasing a whole new level, which is exciting all the time. But anybody that knows me also knows that's why I'm gray. <laughs> Back to wrestling. Ib Kaiser out 5 0 here on the North Mat. Riken Oral, a takedown. He leads 2 0 in his match. Killer Peterson and Kai Rush, they're still scoreless. Back in that auxiliary gym. Um, I think I know what causes part of that problem with the static is our cords, these long cords, and you roll over them and that can tend to damage them. <coughs> Hope you're all doing fine also out there health-wise. You know, there's a lot of <clears throat> crud going around, some that last sticks with people for, I've heard, up to two, two and a half months. It hit me about two and a half weeks ago, and I am still battling it, sinus, eyes. But I got a couple weeks off. Mid-Dakota Monster, talking about the, some of the tournaments I've been able to be just a dad due to the expansion of our staff. Here's something that I'm, I'm going to stop for a moment. I do appreciate those couple weeks off as McCook Central Montrose. They did a great job with their tournament, the Lyman Raiders, Mid-Dakota Monster. I know I know they also uh, did a great job. A lot of frustration with the Mid-Dakota Monster, and I'd like to take a moment to explain. The Mid-Dakota Monster 
is a wrestling tournament put on by the Lyman Wrestling Tournament, not the school. When the wrestling club went to the school, they were, for the first time, charged a fee to rent the facility for their two-day tournament. Lyman, at that point, knew that they had to recover those costs, and they chose to go pay-per-view, which upset a lot of people. Our format is 100% these events that are put on by the school. In this case, this is the Winter Invitational. We keep those free, and that is done by those sponsors that you see rolling. If you are a sponsor or if you frequent those sponsors, please tell them how much you appreciate what you do because out of 5,000 events in a year, we do maybe four different private organizations, renting facilities, pay-per-view. Uh, we maybe do 10 events, pay-per-view, to help them recover their cost so they don't have, the raise, have to raise their rates if you choose to attend. But these sponsors that we do go after to bring coverage of the kids, and they, they appreciate the exposure for their business, number one, but that's what facilitates all these free productions going on. Now, Live Ticket started just a little history out of the basement of my house as a hobby 12 years ago. Since that time, it has grown. We have now 11 full-time employees, 82 part-time employees, a total of 93 people bringing you 5,000 events across the state. It's amazing to see how this thing has just spawned and grown. And it's allowed you to watch not only your local kids, but you can go watch other kids. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag because it's almost done. Y'all go buy smart TVs and y'all want to watch these events on your smart TVs without hooking up to uh, an HDMI cable to your computer. Well, here in about two weeks, you'll be able to down the live ticket app which will have each one of these participating schools, 92 of them, along with our the 92 are marketing partners with sponsors. The other 27 allow us content. So 92 and 17, you're looking at 119 schools will be available on that live ticket app on Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV, where you'll be able to go download the app. Just go to your app like you do YouTube TV, Go to the school that you want to watch, watch them, and then you can, oh, this game's over. I'm going to go to Gregory. And instead of bouncing around and searching for all these different schools on YouTube, typing it in, trying to find it, favorite it, whatever, that will be available, and that will be sponsor-driven also for each one of these schools. So now you'll be able to go to your Roku TV if you're a Winter Warrior fan. Uh, click on the LiveTicket.tv app. Scroll and favorite the Winter Warriors. It'll always show up, but there'll be a TV guide where you'll be able to go watch any of these kids around the state. We have went to a completely new level in chasing technology again. That is one of the things that we're really, really excited for. Everything right on one app, and you can just go to the TV guide and scroll up or down on all these smart TVs. So super exciting um, content coming here in the near future getting you caught back up in wrestling uh caden zomer of bonhomme avon out here on the mat he trails clayton pankratz of parker by a score of nine to zero riken Worrell gonna wrap up a 6-2 victory very hard fought victory between him and Jaden bolt the eighth grader bolt looks more like about a freshman or a sophomore maybe a junior Oral beats him 6-2 and goes to 26-9 and on the season. In the back room, Phillip Arias, Kale Krauser, Phillip, uh, I call him the Badland Brawlers, Krauser leading 17-5 to over Blaze Arp of Custer. You know, I think I can do this. I just realized here's a new feature. Oh, I'm so, well, maybe not. I think I can, though. 
Let's see if I can do this here. Um, first, I'm going to refresh. I believe in, in our software providers always making changes to help us expand our coverage so here I'm going to be cute I know I'm going to take down your track wrestling for a moment but I think you're going to appreciate how fun this is because we have the auxiliary gym And I'll have to escape here. But I can do that. I had earlier. So we can take a live look in on the auxiliary gym in the background. If a big match is coming up like my son and I can't get back there to watch. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, North Matt, Miss Trey Ziegler, sophomore for the Winter Warriors. His opponent is Aiden Forgey, the Potter County battler. battler. As Molly likes to say, Molly was the original founder of the Potter County Battlers. Oops, I gotta go back here and I need to do one thing in the background though I am hearing audio off of that mat in the background and I want to get back over here so we're playing around a little bit with the technology and the new features that have come out Trey Ziegler but back to Molly um, Molly one of the, she was the founder of the Potter County Battlers and covered them, works for the uh, Gettysburg newspaper. Miss you, Molly. I know you're probably out there watching also. Over on Matt, the South Matt, that's Owen Beckenick of Wagner taking on Jackson Saba of Bonhomme Avon. The Saba family, I've known them for a good dozen years. And they're still producing great wrestlers out there. Went to some national tournaments with them. Actually, I think the first tournament I did is, was a national tournament in Nebraska. Did I stream that one? I can't remember. Well, Jackson out there competing, and now in the back room, Ryland Schrake of Stanley County taking on Von Morgan. Frankfurt, the seventh grader from Hot Springs. There's another great guy. Ray Rinksmeyer, graduate of winter, been out in Hot Springs for a long time. Head of the USA Wrestling Organization, freestyle and Greco Roman. He's taken some great teams to Fargo to compete in Grand Forks up north, all over the actually Disney duels. If your kids really, really want to develop get them extra season out of season camps I have sent both of my young men to camps in the summer we personally have found great success and I'm going to say this um, I know Nash Hutmaker is down at Lincoln playing football and wrestling talk about a great character kid that's come through live tickets um productions I've gotten a chance to know that Nash and I knew his father from a long time ago but what a great man I wish him nothing but success Nash also now wrestling for the Cornhuskers and my kids have both went to their takedown clinic down in Nebraska and it's paid huge dividends back to Ray Rinksmeyer every year he takes multiple teams of South Dakota kids to the Disney duels. 
What a great tournament as Saba gets the fall seven to two. But he'll take down teams of South Dakota kids to the Disney duels, and they will compete against other states' elite programs. And winner always does, or not winner, South Dakota always does a great job at the Disney duels. You've gotten to see our kids really develop down there. So between camps and off-season wrestling, if they want to see growth, it doesn't have to be guaranteed success. Success is determined not by state titles, but improvement. Um, kids that go from nine wins to 25, 30 wins in a season because of extracurricular um, participation in the summer, off-season wrestling or camps, that's huge. You don't know what it does for a young man's confidence in the competitive field of athletics, but then it goes on and it parallels or permeates over into their school success and then life choices where they're going to go to school career fields it's great for these kids i love seeing growth success may be going from one win to ten wins i can find success in any one of these kids when i get to know them fernando rivero of potter county going to go out and take on bison hertz of sully buttes they traveled right through Fernando traveled right through Sully Buttes to get here so he could wrestle Bison. Caden Westergren leading 2-0 on the south mat over Wyatt Schilling. And in the back room, Ryland Schrake of Stanley County. 9-1 lead over Von Mogan Frankfurt. Speaking of Stanley County, I remember um, when that program took off. Uh, watching this cradle here on uh, by Hertz. Take down of Fernando, gonna stack him up and get the fall. John Latham of Stanley County went there, um, had a lot of success under John Latham. He's now one of the head officials in the Western District and he's part of those Disney duels. People just always giving back, giving back. I love seeing that also. They may leave one area but they move on and they give back. So now we go to 190. This is Isaiah Crownover. The Crownover family have been following them for a long time. Boots now officially graduated from USD. Um, Isaiah is younger brother. He's at 190. He's a freshman. He's 20 and 3. You're going to get a fall. Sully Butte's going to get another fall over on the south mat. Caden Westergren of Sully Butte's over Wyatt Schilling. I think I missed my son's match. I think I missed Kellen's match. I've been just rambling along talking. Did he wrestle? I don't know either. Well, we're going to take a look. First, I got to do some more cleanup here. Customer service. Oh, you had to buy. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Sorry about this, folks. I got to do it. We got the Hanson Classic is underway, and it is pay-per-view today. Um, that's one of those things. The Hanson Athletic Club has done some extravaganza as Isaiah will get the fall here on the north mat. They have to rent the Corn Palace and rising cost, inflation, last four years they've done pay-per-view to keep the ticket admission where it is. So if you wanted to attend, prices don't go up. Everything else has went up except for the price of admission. 
they found they were going to charge for the pay-per-view and they just charged what they would charge at the door had you went. You don't spend the gas. You don't have meals on the road, concessions. don't have the cold weather there to fight. But it's helped them maintain their cl- costs as a booster club. And what's really cool about the Hanson Classic, they give away scholarships to those kids that participate. And they bring teams together that don't normally play each other. Winner will be over there taking on Howard today. Holy cow, that Howard team. It's going to be a football game out there. Winner, ooh, Quinn Moon and Mason Curtis over on the south mat. Moon with that thundering takedown that you may have heard in the background. Lane Geisner and Cameron Hunnell in the back underway also at 190. 215 on the north mat. That's Jensen Fitch and Axton Gates of Mobridge Pollock. But Hanson, that booster club, they're able to do so much with those contributions. And I will tell you, they their cost is like Three thousand dollars a weekend to, or a day to rent it, and they rent it two days. They've left their prices where they are at, and chose just to uh, tack a fee on what you would pay if you're traveling to go over there. Live ticket makes nothing off of those pay-per-views. All the monies go back to the schools, so they can continue to do their classics and extravaganzas and keep them going and keep the cost affordable for the people that are attending. I always like the gym experience better than watching online, but man, when I can't make it, I'm willing to toss in a little. Um, Not this winter, last winter, that blizzard that rolled through South Dakota in December, the L&I had no attendance. Nobody can make it. But because of their pay-per-view, they didn't go bankrupt as an organization, and they were able to continue on and continue the LNI, which now is talking about expanding the pay-per-view dividends for the LNI organization were $45,000. It cost them $40,000 to rent the, the monument, 40000 to rent it for their five-day extravaganza. They were able to avoid bankruptcy, and continue to bring in all those great teams. Speaking of great, Caleb Rickenbaugh, 27-1 and one of Hot Springs, ranked number two. Got Parker Mathis on his back. Parker, 10-10, 10, having a good year for Parker. Really good year. This is just a tough matchup with Rickenbaugh. This will help. Well, maybe it helps. Parker doesn't let anything affect him. It's like water off a duck's back. He'll shake it off and he's able to put that into perspective I just wrestled the number two kid in the state that's been ranked in the top four for the last five years Parker will be fine Caleb will be fine looking forward to some of those matches coming up Rick and Bon Weeman possibly in the finals um, now up it's going to be Golder and Ziegler on the north mat on your south mat. Quinn Moon, 5-1 lead on Mason Curtis. That match in the second period, 47 seconds to go. Mason's got a bleeder. In the back, Cade Braun and Patrick Trask of Phillip locking horns at 285. Braun, 23-7. and seven. There's something you don't see. Cade Brown, actually I'm going to say Brown. Wrestling a 285-23 win season. Mason really bleeding, tucked all the way around. So the question was asked, and how much does it cost to sponsor um, any of the schools that you have out there? Well... We tried to have, we've tried to build a platform that will allow you to contribute in any way. And here's what a lot of people don't realize. Everything that you spend with LiveTicket.tv in a sponsorship, 50% goes back to the school in one capacity or more to each of these schools. Now, you have businesses, we have businesses that pay as little as $25 a month, and we have some 
that want max exposure that will be paying up to $250 a month and it's over a one-year contract um, we have some businesses that have bought every single school in the state some buy regional packages that are 30 schools some will buy 10 schools there are discounts for um, wanting to sponsor more, most of the schools but thank you for asking that question because there's a lot a lot of uh, we, we understand that we are partners with these schools and when you take a look at this team list Bon Home, Avon both those two schools are live ticket schools winner of course, Custer, Stanley County is, Parker is, Phillip is Lee Deadwood is, Wagner is Burke and Gregory both are, Potter County is um, Andy Central is so of the schools here, 18 of them today, there's only Five, 13 of the 18 are schools that are marketing partners on the live ticket network. And it's changed a lot of the experiences. I know you guys hear me on the mic quite a bit. Cause I, I, and it's mostly for wrestling. But you have others that jump on for football. Coach Aker, you'll have Gerald Tibrick jump on. Basketball season, it's Tibrick, Aker, Betty Watzel does a great job covering volleyball and basketball all trying to contribute as we bring coverage and there's others in other towns that jump in and contribute in different ways um, it's fun and I know I'm still rambling Wyatt Ziegler leading 2 nothing over Lincoln Golder of Custer over here on the north mat Golder, the freshman, 8-9, taking on Ziegler, the sophomore who's 7-10. Can he get the fall while he trails? Quinn Moon leading 7-1 over Mason Curtis. Moon in the duel last night got the fall on Parker Mathis. Uh, Mason ended up wrestling number one ranked Burt Blasius and got pinned. Near, nearly kept it to a tech fall, which would have... Um, won that without the criteria and I know my volume is kind of going crazy right now or static I'm going to see if I can't fit and go with this as I'm talking to get it back Braun leading 10-3 to 3 back in the Ox gym my whole point is you hear me going back to my conversation I was having with you before on the mic quite a bit in the wrestling season love doing it love getting to know these kids it's been a passion of mine for a long time um, what you don't see is behind the scenes how many kids are involved on the camera work the production um, some are doing announcing right now you think of Abraham down in Clone, young Abe calling the Clone Cowboy games he's a 7th grader doing play by play in color folks that's awesome so 3-3 three, three match, Ziegler gets off his back, comes from behind after nearly being pinned, and he will get a fall after nearly being pinned. Maybe that cleans it up, maybe it doesn't. Nope, I'm still a little static and I apologize. Um, LiveTicket.tv, uh, just another example of what you don't know, these kids that are coming through the programs. We have right now four different students that have absolute full rides to college to continue on in technology. Uh, of those 82 part-time kids, there are probably 30, 40 kids in college locations helping run productions also, and that's paying for their college education. This is about giving back to you as fans, these student athletes out here on the mat, the sponsors. You know, we say we're giving the scholarships away, but without the sponsors, it doesn't happen. Ryland Robbins at 106 in a quarterfinal, taking on George, uh, John Ryder Weiss of Hot Springs. It's 2-1. Robbins, a quick takedown, gives the escape. 
in on our south mat, you're going to get Braden Yeager of Hot Springs, the young freshman, going to take on fourth-ranked Stetson Shelbourne, the senior out of winter. Last year, had to sit out with a broken collarbone. And uh, winner fortunate to have an, a first-year wrestler named Derek Feninga, big young man, steps in and fills the shoes of Stetson while he's healing and finishes eighth in the state in his first year wrestling ever. Stetson and him really making each other better this year. Stetson has secured the varsity spot right now over a state placer. Um, he's looking to get his chance to podium. Young Braden Yeager, the freshman, really right now struggling down 2 nothing and will be pinned. But this experience will help him in the future also when he gets to be a junior or a senior he'll remove these matches he'll look for the pendulum to go the other direction I think hmm, just reminiscing here I see Burke Blasius and Jace across the way I think of Justin Blasius a young, young man he's younger than I am who I wrestled and I watched go on to have great success at South Dakota State He's huge and uncle to these kids. Lane, a multi-time state champ, great wrestler for Phillip. But Justin now contributing. He jumps on the mic and helps up in Kimball White Lake. Um, appreciate. I got to do a football game with him and a wrestling tournament finals. The insight, just listening to him. Oh yeah, my camera went crazy, so here. Well, we'll go back and, uh, sorry about that, one camera went crazy on me. And let's see, that's camera. Well, one thing the PTZs do is they will take off and run on their own once in a while. We can get fan shots too. We'll preset these in. Give you a little boundary. And the first thing I'm gonna do here on camera two is I'm gonna set this as a preset. Go to camera one, and I'm going to set that as a preset so it doesn't run off on us. And if it does, I can fix it. Sorry about that, folks. See, I was on the back end watching track wrestling, and I could just watch it like you are right here on your screen. I think I have that blown up enough. I think I can blow it up actually even more where you guys get a good view. And I can just stay right here on this page and keep an eye on the cameras. Oh yeah, look at that, baby. You will see my adjustment now. <laughs> So, North Matt, Max Anderson, and Ryer River Larson of Bonhomme Avon, 0 0. It's going to be a fall over on the South Matt, a quarterfinal in the B bracket, and give the victory to Jackson Trant of Custer. See, there's a name, Trant, if you heard me earlier. Another Trant coming through that Custer wrestling room in the Ox Gym right now in a 106 pound wrestle back. Phillips Keenan Snyder, eighth grader. He leads by a score of 10 to three over Jack Stewie. It's another name you need to know or maybe do know.
Lance Stewie would probably have been his brother. Fresh track for you. Another name, Nick Schlotter, going to get the victory. Quick takedown and a fall over Hutchinson over on the south mat. Schlotter, 14 and 6 on the season. Phone is charged. We're going to pull up. Um, Rankings again. Love to keep those up for you guys. We always go to Dakota Grappler and check the South Dakota General Board to see the rankings. You got to become a member. Um, John Gum of Dakota Grappler has done a great job promoting wrestling in South Dakota for a, a long time. We can just peek at the rankings as we roll through. River Larson going to get the victory at 106 for Bonhomme Yvonne uh, wrestling team. River ranked number seven. He will advance on. Man, I do too much online. I'm sitting here looking at the ADMs. Sounds like Canton will be an A school next year, along with Custer and Tri-Valley, leaving the B ranks where they're trying to win their seventh in a row. We're just going to clean up a little bit here on our screen. Being the guy that I am, I like to... You won't notice this change, maybe. But you'll know I did something different there. Right now, Shea Weber, Philip, the seventh grader, out leading two to nothing. He had a couple of exhibition matches last night get to wrestle varsity today his opponent is bryson balloon of parker over on the south mat lee deadwood gold digger parker millard taking on corbin palsma bonhomme Ivan. that is a quarterfinal at 113 palsma leads that one the 106 quarterfinal just ended in the ox gym we'll get that next match up for you it's going to be Michael Brana, Bonhomme Yvonne, taking on Judd Hansen. 106-pound quarterfinal. Judd uh, ranked number three for the Storm, 28-2 on the season. There, pulls it up. His opponent, Michael Brana of Bonhomme Avon, thinking of Lisa Sestak down there at Bonhomme Avon. Technology teacher has been a big part of uh, Bonhomme. 
putting productions on. Avon, a part of the wrestling co-op. Brad Poppy over in Avon, along with Tom Culver, who have been big proponents, big booster supporters of Avon's channel on liveticket.tv. People you don't know that are also part of, I mean, I talked about full-time employees, part-time employees, but so many educators around the state buying into this and we're able to give back to their audio video programs at the schools and that really excites us a unique mar marketing partnership that helps them weber leading eight to nothing here oh duke i'm watching philip area you got duke um duke out in philip he, he's been great if you ever see duke He'll have a little mustache. He'll be the guy behind the camera. cameras running the productions. Buy him a cup of coffee. Duke's that guy. He's like me. He likes coffee. Duke, absolutely a great conversation. And quite honestly, the Philip Scotty, Scotty's productions, without him, wouldn't have probably gotten off the ground. So buy Duke um, a coffee. He likes Dark Canyon coffee, by the way, if you uh, <laughs> ever want to know. We're going to bring camera one in just a little tighter for you. On the mat, Weber leading 13 to 1 as we are in a wrestle back on the north mat. It is a quarterfinal at 113 over on the south mat. Corbin Palsma leading 6 nothing over Parker Millard. I hope we get to see Miles Renner today at uh, that 144 weight class. He's been fun to watch develop over the years, and I really enjoy that coaching staff for the lead Deadwood Cold Diggers. They got something going out there, folks. Bonhomme Avon's Michael Branagh still trailing Judd Hansen two to nothing. And taking a look at some recent results, River Larson again got the pin, ranked seventh over Anderson of Lemon McIntosh in two forty nine. Um, that could be interesting. I want to check that. Yeah, Anderson ranked tenth. So River Larson and Anderson, 7 and 10 in the state, meeting in the quarterfinals at 106. That looks to be a loaded weight class. Cordes gets the fall also at 106 in a quarterfinal over Walker of Stanley County, that in 324. Weber polishes up a 15 to 1 victory, and here comes Rukin Ronkin Robbins. Love this young man, love his spirit. You know, Rukin 23 and eight as a seventh grader and has been ranked, has wrestled with some great kids. He's taken on Micah Birchfield in Birchfield six and 14, Rukin 23 and eight. You hear these kids that win 200 matches in a career Quite honestly, Rukin could be one of those kids that pushes 250, 300 wins by the time he's done. He got poked in the eye there. He's all right. We like Ronkin because I think he's a little bit rodeo. Class B ratings boards. It's R-O-U, not R-O-N, but we like the nickname. We've adopted it here in our productions. Gus Tobin going to take the mat at 113 on the south mat. He's in the white singlet. He's going to take on Feeblecorn. Feeblecorn, Daniel, a sophomore for the Burt Gregory Storm. Gus Tobin, an eighth grader. Three and four. He's a young man that's seen a lot of success in the AAU ranks and hopes to translate it. And look at Birchfield come right over the top of Rook and Robbins for that takedown. Birchfield, the senior, taking on the seventh grader, leads two to zero.
Judd Hansen leading two to nothing back in the auxiliary gym. Taking a look at the 113-pound rankings, neither Birchfield or Rukin Robbins ranked at this time. Rukin, with the reversal, has tied this match at 2-2. Two to two. Feeblecorn with a takedown. The sophomore leads 2-0 over Gus Tobin. As they are underway in the second period, that's a 113-pound wrestleback match. Judd Hansen in the background in the Ox Gym leading 2-0 that quarterfinal. A little bit tighter than what I anticipated as um, Branagh is the JV wrestler. And he's taking on third-ranked Judd Hansen. Or should have maybe, you know, River Larson of Bonhomme Levon ranked seventh. Normally you've got a really good teammate weight class above or below you, and once in a while they're right below you in the same weight class as a JV wrestler. Ronkin, blast double. He is going to take a 6-2 to two lead. He's got those legs split. He's not going to give it up. Birchfield desperately trying to get that leg free and does. Action slowing here. Hansen has picked up another two points back in that ox gym. Uh, let's see if that was a reversal or a takedown. It was a reversal. He now leads four to zero in his match with Brana. And that one looks to have went final. Back in the Ox Gym, Hansen gets the victory. Up next, Avery Williams of Sully Buttes taking on Chance Wagner, the eighth reader out of Phillip. Rukin was going to go down to start the third. Birchfield says, no, we're going on our feet. 7-2, I'm going to take you foot to back, he's thinking. And, he, <laughs> oh, there's the toss. I'm telling you, Rukin went in there, was thinking, okay, I'm going to throw you, I'm going to show you. And Birchfield with the head toss. you got to be careful with the Bison wrestlers. Ray Rinksmeyer has got those kids for the last decade plus. They're physical. Remember, freestyle, Greco-Roman. And this is just Rukin. Ronkin. He is holy terror for six minutes. You have to wrestle Rukin for six minutes. You have to beat him physically and mentally for six minutes. Birchfield with a nice kind word to Robbins. And... Uh, Robbins advances to the semifinals. Birchfield, nice match going. We'll see him maybe in the wrestlebacks punching through on the backside. Up next at 120 in a quarterfinal on the north mat, Hudson Peters taking on Colton Preheim of Parker. 
Hudson, 16 and a, oh no, this is Billy Stone of Parker taking on Lucas Nelson. Huddy and Preheim are on deck. Tobin, 4-4 with Feeblecorn. Oh, he's trying to turn him, got too high, and he's going to give up a reversal. Late in the third period of that match, Feeblecorn has taken a 6-4 lead. That might be too much to overcome. Saw that last night, a uh, couple varsity matches. Leads late, get too high. You bail, and you don't realize you have enough, not enough time to work back. Gus Tobin eliminated from the tournament. Feeble Corn advances, but valuable experience for little Gus. He will be a contributor here in the near future to the Warrior Wrestling Room. Billy Stone trails Lucas Nelson 2-1. to one. That on the north map. That's a wrestle back at 113. Quarterfinal on... the south mat. You're looking at Logan Hansen, the seventh grader out of Burt Gregory. Jackson Trance. Older brother, I dare say, and Tyler. Tyler Jr., 29 and 4. Tyler at 113, taking a look at the most recent rankings provided by the Class B ratings board to us here at 605. Tyler ranked number 3 at 113. He already leads 4 to 1. And the time it took me to spit that out, two takedowns, make it three takedowns. No, two takedowns, three-point near fall. In your auxiliary gym, a wrestle back at 113, Chance Wagner. 7-0 over Avery Williams. Lucas Nelson and Billy Stone. These two kids in a wrestle back match, both looking for their first victory of the season. Nelson leading 4-2 after he clasps hands. Got one more customer service issue I gotta clean up here real quick. Peters and Preheim 
Uh, they are scoreless and just fixed itself just by unwrapping them. <laughs> Don't know if that uh, <coughs> feedback, cross feedback, we'll figure it out. Huddy, 16 and 11 on the season. Preheim, 12 and 15 for the Pheasants. Lashowitz with a takedown over Dean Nathan of Hot Springs. That's a 120 pound wrestle back. Dare we say we see back to back since Sunshine Bible Academy victories here on the north, now in the, the south mat. In your ox, Jim, it's a quarterfinal at 120. Trey Weiss taking on Bryson LaRoche. 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 That's a quarterfinal. Scoreless first period between Huddy and Preheim. Huddy had choice. I think he deferred. Let's double check that. Who had choice? Well, it's not going to give us who had choice. Preheim with the escape now leads Hudson by a score of one to zero. And still 2-0 over on your south mat. Lashowitz and Nathan. Back room, Trey Weiss has opened up a 13-4 lead at the end of the first period. Of course, Trey at 120. He is ranked number two behind Case and Constance. Other tournaments that you could go watch this weekend. Um, you got the Little B over in Parkston taking place. You've got the East West Duels up in Pier. You got the River City Classic up in Chamberlain. That's just here in the area within, you know, 90 miles of us. Four really, really good tournaments. Pier runs a dual tournament in that East West Duels. River City Classic, John Donovan in the Chamberlain Wrestling Room bringing teams from the ESD and West River, and they meet in the middle. And Parkson, they had the little B. They considered it, the, years ago, it kind of was a preview of the state tournament. Hudson trailing one nothing, Lashowitz with the cradle over on the south mat, tight cradle. But you can see no danger of pinning his opponent. Lashowitz gets the three. Huddy and Preheim fighting for a takedown. There's a headlock by Preheim. And now back point swipes. He's got a five count, which means a three point near fall.
Preheim will have at least a 6-0 lead. Lashowitz gets the victory in the back. Auxiliary gym at 120. That's now Potter County's Lance Stewie in a quarterfinal taking on Cash Peterson of Bonhomme Avon. Stewie leads 2-0. Up next on the south mat, strapping on the leg bands, Asher Peterson, the senior for Phillip at 126. Going to take on the sophomore from Stanley County, Landon Bame, who's 18-9 on the season. Hudson running out of time. Actually, that wasn't a takedown. That was just a three-point near fall. Huddy got caught in the scramble, nearly had the reversal, actually gave up a three-point near fall, and he will drop a four-to-nothing decision. A lot tighter than last night, and that happens in rematches. First one goes 9-4, this one 4-0. Up next on your north mat. 120 pound quarterfinal. Tucker Bow of Phillip, 26 and 6. Taking on Wyatt Rand, sophomore from Parker. Tucker Bow, when you take a look at those 120 pound rankings, checks in at number 6 for the Badland Brawlers. Scoreless here in the main gym and the Ox gym. Lance Stewie, 7-0 over Cash Peterson. Wrestling, uh, can you believe? 10.40, 10.35 start. Been going on for two hours already. In the Ox Gym right now, top ranked at 126, Maxton Brozik. Taking on the eighth grader from Bonhomme Avon, Weston Birma. He's got a couple takedowns, leads four to one. Tucker Bow takes care of business here on the north mat. Up next, North Mat. It's going to be Phillip Area's Kaysen Berry, the eighth grader. He's 12 and 11. Taking on Lee Deadwood's Drew Yonke, the junior. Drew, 7 and 5 on the season. Now back in your auxiliary gym. It's going to be Wagner's Karsten Lotech at 132. It's got Wyatt Wenchies of Mobridge Pollock, who's 14 and 6, taking a look at that 132 pound weight class. Wenchies ranked ninth, Lotech number two. Number two versus number nine at 132 in the Ox gym. This 132 pound weight class is also. A very loaded class today. Bame and Asher Peterson at 126 in a quarterfinal. Uh, neither one of these. No, oh, Bame is ranked ninth. Asher unranked, but he's a Peterson. There, he's almost going to get the takedown as I queue him up.
little blood time here on Matt, the North Matt Yankee of Lee Deadwood leads that match by a score of five to zero. I'm kind of drifting and watching that Bame versus Peterson match. Bame leads one zero. They go to the third, or they're in the third period. Minute and a half to go. It's a quarterfinal at 126. Low Tech in the back end in that two versus nine matchup. There's blood time back there at the moment. That's seven to one. Low Tech leading Wyatt Winchies of Mobridge Pollock. Bames got one. As they go out of bounds, nice work. He's trying to get the two. He'll get one, and it's two to zero. 50 seconds to go in that third period. Yankee leading 5 nothing on the north mat. And Lotech still blood time back there with him and Winchies. Give Drew Yankee the victory for Lee Deadwood. He's on to the semifinals. Up next, North Matt, 132-pound wrestleback, Bo Van Wy of Stanley County, taking on Holden Looper of Hot Springs. Oh, and Peterson going to get a takedown. He'll tie that match to... No, he takes a lead, 4-2. That'll shake up the rankings there in 126 as those are region opponents. Bame projected to be the region champ at 126. Asher Peterson gets a 4-2 victory. Class B ratings boards will take a look at that one. Nice singlet coming out over on... The South Mat. That's Lemon McIntosh's Gage Anderson, 22 and 5. Going to take on Winter Warrior Connor Osborne, Jr., 23 and 6. Connor unranked as he's projected fifth in that stacked region three. Anderson ranked number five in the state. Gage, salty. Really, really salty. Connor just keeps coming. He gets first takedown. He leads 2-0. to zero. Looper leading 2-1 over Van Wy of Stanley County on the north mat. Low Tech and Wenchies have resumed first period action. That was a long blood time. Low Tech now leading 9-2. Just recapping some other matches. Ox Jim, we saw Max Brozik ahead big. He did get the fall in a minute 28 over Birma of Bonhomme Avon. Brozik at 126 on to the finals. Anderson with an escape, 2 1. He takes his shot. Connor able to defend with getting those hips back. And that'll be the end of the first period. Oh, stalemate. Short time. Osborne and Anderson. Osborne leading two to one. We're going to have some fun here with this one. Yeah. 
Green's choice. Connor will defer. Anderson will choose down. Too many things going on. I get confused. That is dangerous. Me being confused. <laughs> We're going to highlight some of these matches. Looper and Van Wy, 6-5 still. Low Tech leading 14-3. Blood time, Osborne goes to his corner. Anderson ready to go. The Lemon Macintosh Cowboy. Looper still leading 6 5. Low tech. End of the second period, quick second period for him and Winchies leads 14 to 3. Love the new camera systems. Talking about technology earlier, able to bring you some of the craziest shots you didn't see it this close in the past. And we can zip out pretty quick. And go to the other camera and take a look at these two young men. Can't do them simultaneously, but this is a 6 5 match here on the north mat. Looper of Hot Springs in that blue and black singlet. Stanley County's Bo Van Wy. We'll come back center circle. <laughs> Give you a look at uh, Connor and Anderson. Low Tech gets the victory over in the Ox Gym. This one, getting Anderson trying to get those hips up and over. Osborne going to counter here and try to get that guillotine. Guillotine, guillotine. Potato, potato, we've had those conversations the last couple of weeks. We're going to go check the Ox Gym really quick. See if we can't get that pulled up. It's Calvin Saba, a 138-pound. Nope. Yeah, it is Jackson Call of... Uh, Bonhomme Avon, 20 and 4, taking on Jeremiah Freeman of Parker, 132 pound quarterfinal. Call ranked number 3. Freeman ranked number 12. That back in your auxiliary gym. We'll come in and take a look at this one. 2 1. Anderson at 132, ranked 5. Osborne projected fifth in his region, but every one of those four ahead of him projected to place top seven. Connor trying to make a mark for himself here. Knocking off number five, but he's going to have to get out of regions to be competitive on the state level. That's going to be the challenge for Connor. Coaching staff and Connor and I believe he is more than capable of doing it. He's trying to come out back door here. Trying to improve, leading two to one. Now over on your north mat. That's Carson Keezer. We'll go in and uh, maybe we will. 
Hold on one second. He's got Taus Weberg of Burt Gregory. This is Carson Kieser, ranked number three for the Warriors. We'll pull up track wrestling. These are leading by a score of now six to two. These guys harder to follow as they move a lot quicker than Osborne and Anderson. This one, three one. Osborne gonna get the takedown. Five one lead over the number five ranked wrestler in the state. Short time here in the third period, big takedown. Osborne going to advance to the semifinals. Doesn't get any easier for him. Can you imagine that? The number five kid in the state in a quarterfinal in a weight class, getting knocked off in a quarterfinal to quarterback club invitational. In your auxiliary gym, Kelvin Saba at 138 is taking on Spencer Sargent. Saba, Bonhomme Avon, 14 and 10 freshman. Spencer Sargent leading now 4 0, 19 and 7 from Stanley County. Either one of these two young men ranks. And let's go ahead and flip over one. The South Map, Custer's Riley Scott at 138. Scott, uh, no, at 132, ranked number four. Taking on Eli Hathead Eckroth, sophomore, who's 12 and 8. So, Carson, 14-4. in and Carson just doing takedowns. <laughs> he is number two in the state in overall takedowns this season. This puts him probably close to the century mark or over it actually after that first round match. I know my audio is tweaking a little bit. We're just going to let it run its course. Teaser going to get the tech fall. He'll win 20 to 6. That will be the final there. We're going to jump to our next match on the north mat. Tyler Beersma, Bonhomme Avon at 138, is going to take on Mecky Hayes of Lee Deadwood. At 138, um, Beardsma ranked number six. I just saw Carson Keyser number three get the victory. Mackie Hayes unranked 13 11, but he's damn good, folks. I realize he's out there wrestling with Spearfear, Sturgis, Stevens, Central, Custer, Hot Springs. Mackie Hayes always represents himself well. It's 2-1 to one as Beardsma gets the escape. And 5 nothing. Scott with the lead over Eckroth. On your south mat. Spencer Sargent had that quick four. He leads 4 nothing back in the auxiliary gym. Riley Scott, 7 nothing lead. Scott just a grinder at 32. Taking a look 
at 132 here at the Quarterback Club Invitational. Number two, Karsten Lotek is here. Number three, Jackson Call. Number four, Riley Scott. Number five, Keej Anderson. Um, number nine, Wyatt Winchies. Number 10, Whit Myers of Stanley County. And number 12, Jeremiah Freeman of Parker. Six of the top 12 at 132 here at the Quarterback Club Invitational. So, wild day at 132. At 138 in the quarterfinal, Michael Even, 23 and 8 of Parker, taking on winners Ash Kaiser. It's 11 and 9. Michael Even of uh, Parker. That's just tough to believe, man. Trying to find him in another weight class. But Michael Even, there he is. He was ranked 10th at 44. He's now down at 38. He's 23 and 8 on the season. He leads 2 to 0. Mecky Hayes and Tyler Beardsma. 3 2 Beardsma with the lead. Beardsma 21 and 4 in that 138 pound weight class. He's ranked 6th. Mecky Hayes, 13-11. But I'm telling you, I love the coaching staff up at Lee Deadwood. Some great assistants. Tyler Watterson up there. They're doing some great things. I don't see Miles Renner in the corner, but pretty much every one of those kids, yeah, there he is. Behind the wrestling action. That's the corner for Lee Deadwood and they are in the corner. Teammates, girls and boys all back there cheering on Mecky Hayes. Carson Kieser had that tech fall. Scott got the fall over Eckroth in 243. Now Michael Even and Nash Kaiser on that south mat. 4-1 your score, even with the lead. Spencer Sargent has stretched a 4-0 lead out to a 10-0 lead in the auxiliary gym. Four two, <laughs> Beardsma kicks out of that high single. Mackey picked up the single and was trying to shelf it and backflips out of it. Does Tyler five two? Even. Has an escape. Kaiser really in deep on that single. Can he finish? Even with a great wizard. I don't know if you saw that on the south, Matt. Wow. Defended beautifully with the wizard. The defense comes from the hips, though. The torque does as he absolutely planted that shoulder into the mat. Ox Jim. Miles Renner. Speaking of Renner, he's on the mat at 44 back in the Ox Gym. Ranked number two behind Jace Blasius. Jace not wrestling today, so we won't get to see one and two in the state there. He is taking on Avery Singleman, seventh grader out of Burt Gregory. Renner coming in two, 22 and three on the season. Gets Singleman, the 11 and 12, seventh grader at 144 for the Storm. Good for Coach Webster. Young Singleman in the lineup. Beardsman with the takedown. No, nope, they're in the third period. Still 5-2, but he's stretching out Mecky Hayes. The power half in that uh, leg ride. He's going to unhook and slide over the top. 
Tyler Beardsma looks to be putting the finishing frosting on this 138 pound quarterfinal. There it is. Mecki represents well. Beardsma gets the victory and goes to the semis. Up next, Maurer and Blair, 144 pound wrestle back on your north mat. Maurer of Hot Springs, 7 and 14 junior. Blair, freshman, 5 and 7 for the Warriors.
All right, folks, uh, customer service issue handled. I'm going to take a break here for a quick second. I'll be back in a few moments.
All right, folks, we are back. <clears throat> We're at 150 here in the main gym. Riley Roberts of Wagner. He leads Abe Kaiser. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, Riley Roberts of Wagner leads Abe Kaiser of Winter 7 0. That's on your north mat. <clears throat> Taking a look at the most recent rankings. Roberts. And Roberts will get the fall. Roberts ranked number one at 150 for Wagner. Gets the fall. Led 9 nothing. Up next, Seaman and Roosh. Zade Seaman of uh, Lee Deadwood, the eighth grader, 14 in line, taking on Kai Rush of Custer, who's 15 and 14. In your auxiliary gym, Max Feasterman taking on Keller Peterson of Hot Springs at a 150 pound, 150 pound wrestleback match. Here on the North Mat, Kai Rush of Custer ranked number seven, the senior from Region 4, Custer Wildcats. On your South Mat, Bo Stone in a 150 pound wrestleback, taking on Trayton Massa of Burt Gregory. Stone leading that match by a score of 12 to 1. And Feasterman and Peterson underway and rolling.
back here at the Quarterback Club Invitational, 150-pound quarterfin quarterfinals in the main gym. Right now, Riker Peterson of Phillip leading 9-2 on the north mat over his opponent, Ivan Stewie of Potter County. We're tied at 2 on the south mat between Gus Bartles and Clayton Pankratz. Bartles with the takedown now leads 4-2. That one late in the third period. In your auxiliary gym, Dylan uh, Buseman leading, well, scoreless right now with Thien Beardsma. All right, I think I have things set up the way I want them again. Aiden Forgey and Kale Hill of Wagner. It's a quick match here on the north mat. Kale Hill will get the victory with the fall. Kale Krauser and Isaac Ramirez of Silly Buttes on the south mat, 157-pound quarterfinal. That is a Krauser 7-1 lead over Ramirez of Silly Buttes. Boozman leading 2-0 and looking for the fall on Dane Beardsma of Bonhomme Avon in the auxiliary gym. And taking a look, Hunter Coons of Hot Springs, 25 and nine. Taking on Colton Brady of Stanley County here on mat one. which is the north mat. Brady with first takedown leads by a score of 2-0. Brady outstanding tailback there for the Buffaloes, 12-5 on the season. Been dealing with some nicks still from the gridiron season. Hunter off to a great start. Freshman 25-9. Kale Krauser on this south mat leading 14 to three. And we have blood time in the back room. Boosman sprung a leak back there as I've now got that video pulled up separate where I can keep an eye, uh, eye on what's going on. Krauser does get the fall over Isaac Ramirez of Sully Buttes. 16-3 and he gets the fall. Up next, Bolander and even at 157. Wondering if they saw each other last night. Don't have that pulled up, but Boosman now leading 7-0. We'll update here, and that's Andrew even. Taking a look at the most recent rankings. Got to find my phone in this mass chaos up here. Even, I believe, is uh, 
You're going to see him rank number four at 157. Coons currently ranked uh, at 175. He's ranked 10, but has made the cut to 165. Taking on Colton Brady. McManus, top seed there. These two are batting, battling not only for advancement in this tournament, but also probably regional seeding. Brady with a reversal. He now leads 4-0. Boozman leading 9-1 to one back in the auxiliary gym. Andrew even a takedown. He leads 2-0. Make it 2-1 on Revan Bolander. Even with another takedown, he extends that lead to 4-1. Boozman, 11-1. Colton Brady, 4-0. Looking at those 165-pound rankings, Brady unranked right now, leading the 10th-ranked 75-pounder in Hunter Coons. And Brady looking for the fall. Wow. Brady gets the fall on Hunter Coons in that quarterfinal at 165. Time looks to be 3 minutes and 35 seconds. Up next, Hassan Even. Hundred and seventy five pound quarterfinal. Andrew even leaving, leading Brevin Bolander by a score of four to one over here on the south mat. Hess, the senior, comes in 13 and seven. Connor even, senior, 16 and 15. Couple pheasants out on the mat. Give first takedown to Connor even. Andrew going to release Bolander, 7-2 lead. Back in the auxiliary gym, Legend Benedict taking on Thane Simons. And Simons leads that one by a score of 4-2.
Hess and Connor Even go to the second period. That match, 2-0, Connor Even. Andrew Even with a commanding 9-2 lead on Brevin Bolander. And Thien Simons cruising after a period 9-2. in that uh, auxiliary gym. going to be a fall for Andrew even and it looks like Ryder Bailey going to take the mat against Caden Westergren in 175 pound quarterfinal in the Ox gym up next on your south mat as we kind of get things reorganized here Colton Volchek, the 21 and 8 junior from Bonhomme Avon, will take on Ryland Schrake, the senior from Stanley County. Taking a look, Volchek is currently ranked number 5 at 175. Schrake unranked for the Buffs. Connor Even still leading 3 0 over Ethan Hess. And blood time here on your north mat. Isaac, excuse me, Isaiah Cronover went out and got a quick fall or has a quick takedown in his match with Jimmy Burma. Crownover at uh, 190, rank 6. Burma unranked. Give you a look at Shrake, who's trying to get first takedown here with full check and has it, he will take a two to nothing lead. Three nothing, we're gonna go to the other mat. And we'll see if we can zoom in here on Connor and Hess. Quick escape there for Connor even. Connor currently ranks at 175. He's ranked number nine. That's Connor even of Parker. Isaiah Crownover still leading 2-0 in the back auxiliary gym in his match with Jimmy Burma. Crownover on top, riding a chicken wing. Hess going to try throwing here. We'll see if we can show you a nice little toss. Connor likes to throw too, so a couple throwers. And that's brute strength there by Connor, even just forcing over the bear hug. We'll come back out with those two. Resume, 3-1, Shrake over Volchek. And Shrake unranks 
out there uh, in Region 4. But with Hunter Coons going down, he's got to believe he's in play for that number three seed out in Region 4 for the Buffaloes. They got a nice little team up in Stanley County. A little bit of a jump there. And we're gonna come in here on Shriek and Volchek. And Volchek will tie that with the reversal as he's able to fight off that power half. Isaiah Crownover still leading 4-0 in the Ox Gym. A short time. Volchek <laughs> makes good use of that final few seconds there in the second period to get a takedown. He trailed 6-3. He did give up near fall points. He made it 6-5. He'll go down. Connor even gets a 6 nothing victory. Up next, Shinnebaum and Brozik over on the north mat. Shinnebaum on ranks, probably sitting 5 or 6 in that region 3. Brozik right now Rank six, sitting behind Volchek and Coulter Kramer in region three, looking at a three seed right now. Volchek has tied that match, six, six. Isaiah Crownover still leading 6 nothing over Burma. And Shrake with a headlock. This would be an upset over on the south mat if Shrake, he doesn't get a takedown, no. Yes, he did, 8-6 and he still has control. So Shrake didn't get back points though. In that crazy match over, and it would be an upset over on the south mat. Short time, under 15 to go for Shrake to pull an upset on the south mat. Whistle and they are away. And Volchek will get a reversal and back points. The desperation and the panic in Shrake costing him As he led by two and will give up a takedown and a two-point near fall to drop that match. Volchak, cardiac kid, grasping victory from the jaws of defeat in the final 10 seconds. Gannon, Knabel, and Saxon up next. Knabel of Bart Gregory, Saxon of Mobridge Pollock. No change in control over on the north mat. Kellen Brozik and Shinnebaum. Caleb Shinnebaum, 9 and 8. Brozik, 20 and 9. 
Second time they've met. Brozick won 6 1 the first time. Rosick with the takedown leads 3 0. Gannon Knable 17 and 1 and at 190, I believe ranked number two. Yep. He is ranked number two. He is 19 and 1. He'll get the fall on Max Saxon, the freshman from Mobridge Pollock. Levi Weeman next. You go from second ranked at 190 to the top ranked at 215 over on that south mat. Rosick with a cradle. And we'll get the fall on Shinnebaum. Rosick and Volchek in the semifinal. Quinn Moon. Up next with Dylan Mead of Lee Deadwood. Levi Weeman first takedown on first takedown on Calvin Grandin of Stanley County. He leads 2-0. Taking a look at that Ox Jim. Isaiah Crownover still out there, third period, leading 11 to 5. Says time is out. Burma. Going to get a reversal here late. And Weeman, quick fall. Crown over, trying to get a reversal, and that's the end of the match. It's 11 5 final in that Ox Gym. Fresh track for you. Quinn Moon out on the north mat. He leads Dylan Mead 2 0. Moon taking a look at the 190 pound rankings, ranked number nine. He's expected to win a match at state. I don't think he'll get two and get into the podium, but he's right there, borderline. His opponent. Dylan Mead, a senior from Lee Deadwood, who is 14 and 7. Number two, Caleb Rickenbaugh. All right, we're back here. Uh, Stetson Shelbourne taking on Riley Kramer in a heavyweight match over on the south mat. Stetson ranked number four, now 21 and 10. And what's really interesting, Kerner has been in the rankings here in the recent past, not currently. Really good heavyweight for the Tigers. He's only a sophomore, is Kerner. Remember that name over the next few years. He is 7 and 13 right now. Ran into some big boys. Dylan Mead and Quinn Moon, 5 3. They go to the second period as Mead is uh, holding his own. Looking at those Region 4 rankings, you know Parker Gnome's out there. He's don't believe he's wrestling today, um, which is odd. You'd think he'd want to match and see Knable, but 
didn't see Parker in the lineup anywhere. Um, it'll come down to Knable and Eklund. You have Quinn Moon sitting at number two in that region. So who's number three? Can't see from the rankings if they're not ranked in the top 12, but is that a Dylan Hess and he's trying to move up in region four? Five, three, your score here on the North Mat. Really good match going on between Moon and Dylan Mead. Kerner and Shelbourne, they've seen each other so many times. This one's 0-0. Zero, zero. And then in your back room, got a great one in the back. Um, you got Jensen Fitch, ranked number four. And his opponent is Tim Boza of Wagner, ranked number five. Number four and five in the state in a quarterfinal back in the back room. So that's crazy. I'm watching that one. Boza and Fitch that's in the Ox Gym, four and five. Fitch wrestled Weeman to a 7-5 match last night in the duels. It took a Weeman takedown late with under 10 seconds to go to beat Fitch. Now he's got number five, Boza. Kerner and Shelbourne scoreless. They are in the second period. Scoreless on the back end between Boza and Fitch. I know you have two video players stacked on top of each other to watch. Uh, I had to create a separate window and pull it up right beside my other, so I'm watching all three mats. Moon will get the fall, leading 7-3 to three over Dylan Mead. Dylan clearly disappointed. It's all right. Up next over here on Matt, the North Matt. 215 pound quarterfinal. Cody Sassaman of Bonhomme Avon taking on Zane Severin. Seems to me Sassaman has come down. <coughs> Excuse me. Rickenbaugh was out there. He got off the mat quick. So did Weeman. That is a number one and two that we are headed for. Four and five. Also 215 loaded. One, two, four, and five here at the tournament along with number eight, Zane Severin, who watched him to Mid-Dakota Monster. He, uh, he shocked some people. He was able to knock off Richmond of Custer. Here he's going to pin Sassaman. And he will advance at 215. Up next on your north mat, Zachary James of Burt Gregory at 285, taking on Emmett Maurer of Lemon McIntosh. Okay, so Emmett Maurer, 13 and 2, and not ranked. Maurer, 13 and 2. And unranked out of that region four. Taking a look, you got Colton Niles ranked, Louis Theory, Gabe Reeve of St. Thomas More is Maurer sitting there at the number four seed in region four. Or is he about to shock a lot of people? Maurer 13 and 2 and unranked. That's hard to believe. 
It's got Zachary James, 6 and 14, junior for Burt Gregory. And look at this, Maurer going to steer wrestle James to the ground. James gets up smiling. And he's like, oh my gosh. Felt like a Hereford getting tossed. James, a big kid. Really big kid. This ought to be interesting. We're going to roll right into the 106 pound wrestlebacks. Coy Shelbourne of winner, freshman 9 and 8, taking on Max Maxwell Anderson of Lemon McIntosh. The Cowboys represented in back to back matches. And Shelbourne and Kerner, they are scoreless and headed to sudden victory. Not over on your south match. First overtime match I can remember. This is sudden victory. Kerner goes for it. Shelbourne gets the takedown. He will get the victory. 3-1 and sudden victory. Jensen Fitch leading 6-2 in that auxiliary gym. That one in the third period under 30 seconds to go. Anderson leading Shelbourne by a score of 4-0. to zero. Up next on the South Mat quarterfinal at 285, Derek Feninga going to be taking on Wyatt Ziegler, a couple sophomores. And Feninga going to throw out of bounds. Picking up feedback from a basketball game here. And, uh, <laughs> Interesting. Tim Smith started rolling through your earbuds, folks. <laughs> oh, having a little fun with everybody here. Shelbourne still trails four zip. Feninga and Ziegler scoreless. And scoreless in the back room. That's a 285 pound quarterfinal. You've got Donald Gergen of Parker taking on Kate Brown of Burt Gregory. Brown goes down in the second period, still the first period. It's got to be second period. No. Nope. Brown has the takedown. I think that's backwards by the looks of it. Oh, I know what's going on. It's just my video player is behind. 
Brown does have the takedown and looking for the fall and will get the fall. Fedenga with the takedown, he leads two to zero. Shelbourne trailing five to zero, gets a takedown. Shelbourne with the takedown and hooks up a cradle, picking up his intensity with under 30 to go. After Coach Vaughn gets after him, says we gotta go, gotta go. It'll be a final Max Anderson of Lemon McIntosh 6-2 victory over Coy Shelbourne. Feninga 2-2 with Ziegler. They're in the second period. And in your back room, Aiden Dooley of Custer has taken on Stanley County Buffalo, Jerick Walker. Jay Weber in a 106-pound wrestleback of Phillip and the Badland Brawlers taking on John Ryder Weiss of uh, Hot Springs. Weber with first takedown. Feninga gets taken down. He'll get the reversal and back points. He'll take a 6-4 to four lead. Weber going to crawl in on a single. On, 
Ziegler trailing 6-4. Going to have to uh, move Feninga. Feninga comes up to his feet. And Ziegler the return in hard cover. Feninga's got a bloody nose in this match, trailing 6-4. Taking a look at the Ox Gym. 106-pound wrestle back. Jerk Walker leading 2-0 over Aiden Dooley. And here, Shea Weber leading 8-4 on the North Bat over John Ryder Weiss. Victory by a score of six to four. Up next, Bronba and Snyder in the back auxiliary gym. It goes two two. Dooley and Walker. Shea Weber leading in a hundred and six pound wrestle back eleven to four on mat one. Rich Stevens in the house, coming up for the bird's eye view. Do you miss wrestling? Yeah, I went to school pools and you go see other things. I went to Pier last night to watch women's wrestling, so. Sure, sure. Let's see how many coaches that actually do both. That was really cool. I'm passionate about ladies wrestling. Do you miss coaching? I miss it badly. Miss it badly? Really? I really miss coaching football. My body's not where I can do this anymore. Still haven't had my knee replacement. I've been canceled every time because of weather or blood pressure issues, so. But Still got a baby face. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work on me for a while here though, for a year. This has been good taking a year off. I'm not doing anything. I think I'm gonna take a year off. Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't miss that at all. 
Some matches wrapping up here. Matt one going to roll over. And up next, Logan Hansen and Relic Bailey, a 113-pound wrestleback. These will be pretty much all wrestleback matches this round. And as those happen, I'm going to do some customer service on the back side. Bear with me if I kind of go silent for a little bit. Hansen leads 2-0 here on the north mat over Relic Bailey. Bronbaugh trailing Snyder of Phillip on your south mat by a score of 4-2. Parker Millard and Chance Wagner of Phillip. A lot of Phillip kids out there. going to be a final on the south mat. Snyder going to drop the match to Bronbaugh. He'll come from behind. Does the Cavalier and gets the victory. Up next going to be Micah Birchfield and Daniel Feeblecorn. That's a 113 pound wrestle back on the south mat.
Hansen leading Bailey by a score of 11 to 2. And Bailey will get a reversal to make it 11 4. Birchfield with first takedown. He leads 2 0 on the south mat. And in your auxiliary gym right now, Jert Hutchinson of Phillip. Saw a lot of him last night. He leads by a score of 2 to 1 over his opponent, Lucas Nelson of Sunshine Bible Academy. Through the quarterfinals, taking a look at team scores as we roll through these wrestlebacks. Winner in the lead with 89. Phillip down a couple horses in their lineup by the name of Blazius and Blazius. They're in second with 85 and a half. Custer in third with 77. They're without Parker Nome, I believe, today. And speaking of Parker, the Parker Pheasants in fourth with 73. I am going to check that 190 pound bracket just to see if Parker did take the day off. He did. Knabel, the one seed, rank two. Eklund, the three seed, or rank three in the two seed. Quinn Moon and Crownover, ranked nine and six, respectively, seeded three and four. Taking a look here at the matches taking place. Wyatt Rand leading Morgan Hood five to nothing, but he will get pinned by Hood in a 120 pound wrestle back on that north mat. Birchfield leading Feeblecorn by a score of five to one. In your ox, Jim, we're gonna flip it over to Hudson Peters and Devin Bauman in the back auxiliary gym. For you Winter Warrior fans out there right now, it is a final. 53-43, Howard will take down the Warriors.
Sean Hammerbeck receives player of the game from the Winter Warriors and his uh, counterpart. Not sure who got it for Howard, but it was a final, 53-43.
are in the wrestlebacks. If you didn't hear me right, number three, number five, and number nine in the wrestlebacks here at this tournament has Lotech beat Wenchies, who is nine. Number two versus nine. No, no surprise there. Number five, Gage Anderson loses to Connor Osborne. Um, Call loses to Jeremiah Freeman. Now, didn't mention Freeman. He's ranked 12 in the rankings. Number 12 beat number 3. Number 5 gets beat by an unranked. And number 9 gets beat by number 2. You have three ranked wrestlers at 132. Number 3, 5, and 9 in the wrestlebacks. That's how crazy 132 is here in this tournament. Give credit. I mean, Holy cow, you got to be happy for all those other kids. So just kind of um, expanding on that thought process, I was redoing my uh, rankings and uh, pages. It's wild at 132. Jackson Call gets the victory. Anderson in the second period in a wrestleback, rank number five, <clears throat> only leads 5-0 at 144 now in the North Mat. Devin Kutka of Parker leading Jed Blair by a score of 3-0. Mecky Hayes, I like Mecky of Lee Deadwood, the senior. He's winning 7-4 back in the auxiliary gym. Mickey throwing people around back there. He's got Aldridge of Hot County on his back. Um, over on your south mat. That's uh, Mobridge Pollock's Caleb Keller. Taking on Brock Kotlick of Bonhomme Avon. 2 nothing. Kotlick with the takedown.
other crazy weight classes. I'm, I'm just kind of bouncing around the brackets here as these matches are happening. 215 was the other one I was taking a look at, and you'll get some of the wrestleback matches here in a bit, but um, you're going to get a rematch of Weeman and Fitch in the semifinals. <clears throat> they are number one and five in the state. They went, or number one and four. That was a 7-5 matchup last night. Rick and Bob will be taking on Severin. And that is a matchup of, uh, at 215, number two versus number eight. So one, two, five, and eight in the semifinals at 215. At 190, just kind of peeking ahead. And I know you should never do that. You have a potential finals of Gannon Knabel of Wagner and Jed Eklund, number two and three in the state. Um, one thing about that matchup, I'm going to get rid of my EDMs. <laughs> EDMs, a lot of talk about that stuff. Going to be a fall. Cotillac gets the fall after leading Keller nine to nothing. Up next, Bolton Singleman at 144 on the south mat. Blair with a headlock trying to come from behind. Trailed 5-1, and he does. So come from behind victory for Jed Blair over Devin Kutka, the junior from Parker. Uh, you never want to look ahead. ADMs. Tri-Valley, Custer, and Canton going Class A for the next two-year period. This may be the run, the end of the run in the Bs for Canton, which would really shake things up if you lose Custer and Canton and Tri-Valley to Class A in the new realignments. Could be interesting. Um, other weight classes. Uh, the number one and two matchup possibility of Weeman or Parker Nome and Knable or Eklund not going to happen is Parker Nome. I didn't even see him here today, so I don't know uh, what is going on. Burke Blasey is sitting out at 75 today. You have Ryder Bailey as the top seed. Uh, Kellen Brozik, the number two seed. And Colton Volchek, the three seed. And Connor Even, the four. That's uh, two, five, six, and nine. At 165, Thane Simons is a go today. I didn't think I'd see him earlier. Number three ranked in top seed here in this tournament. Um, taking a look, Dylan Boosman is the number two seed. He's ranked number 12 at 165 as I browse through these brackets. Actually, Simons the two seed. Jet Breen. How dare I forget Jet. <laughs> Jet the top seed here in the tournament. Uh, Jet moving up from 157 to 65. Getting away from Remmers. Everybody going after that 65 pound weight class. You'll see some movement as you've got some horses in there in Remmers. Jackson at 57 who seems to have a lock on 57. And Burke Blasius who would appear to have a lock on 75 that puts 65 in the middle and you're going to see a lot of movement between uh, 50 and 65 from 57 and 75 Parker Nome 90 is pretty pretty solid in what they're looking at in those rankings going to the heavyweights before I come back into the 50s at 285 today, you've got fourth rank Shelbourne. He's got Maher of Lemon Macintosh, and I'm telling you, Maher is a beast. 14 and 2 now, unranked, and I, that happens to Lemon Macintosh a lot. They're up on that north border. They have a lot of their matches in North Dakota or in Northwest South Dakota. Some of those kids like K.J. Anderson break onto the scene and you don't know about them until they get to a tournament like this. Maher, impressive. Um, even in spite of Michael Uthi. <laughs> Michael, I know you're either here in the stands or 
sitting at home listening to this knucklehead, but yeah, Maher, I wish you'd have let me know he was coming. 14 and 2. You take a look at his season as I browse around here. Got third at the Holiday Extravaganza. Uh, got second at the Harding County Invitational. Got beat in the Harding County Invitational. Well, let's see if I can. There we go. In the finals, Caleb Rickenbaugh beat him at uh, 215. Whoa, my keyboard went for a ride as uh, I'm having some difficulties multitasking. That's Youthy paying me back. <laughs> um, take a look at that holiday extravaganza. He got beat in the semifinals. No, he got beat in the quarterfinals by Tate Crossweight of Rapid City Stevens. So and that was at 215. So he's up from 215. But I got to tell you, he looks the part of a 285 pounder. Interesting move. Why not do it here at this tournament? He has Stetson Shelbourne, number four ranked at 285. Yeah, he's just... I think he's going to shock some people. He got Fenega and Braun going to be in the other quarterfinal from Burt Gregory. Um, so only one ranked young man, only one state placer in the group, and he's not ranked. He's not even varsity. So 285, interesting because of Maurer and what he can do. Taking a look today at 57 in those brackets as we continue to roll through, and I'll let you watch on top the track wrestling results and current matches. Max Feasterman trailing Pancritz in the back room, a winner wrestler. I think your screens, I think this pulls it up nice and big for you. I hope so. Uh, Kale Krauser is the top seed. Krauser at 57, ranked number three. He's going to take on Kale Hill, a young man from Wagner that we know well here in winter. He grew up in the winter wrestling room when he was younger. Then you have Jackson Saba and Andrew Even at 57. Saba ranks 7, so looking for maybe a possible 3-7 final there. The one, Riley Roberts um, and Riker Peterson on a collision course at 150. They're number 1 and 2 in the state. There could be your 1-2 matchup, and it was unexpected. Uh, I, I, For me, it was unexpected. I didn't realize Riley was ranked that high. He's 25-5 and five on the season. Got to see Riker last night. He was 12-2. and two. He's unranked. No, he's ranked second. But uh, just getting going here, relatively speaking, in the season as he was bunged up earlier. Um, taking a look at that 144, Jace Blasius, a no-go today. Got to visit with him and uh, dealing with some, just some stomach ailments. Going to get healthy for that uh, late run. So when you take a look at 44, the top seed now, Miles Renner, who is ranked number one, or number two and seeded number one. He's 23 and three. Um, you'll have Gabriel in the semis. Riken Worrell unranked, the second seed, and Leighton Sander of Custer, the three seed. Um, Sander ranked 12, Worrell unranked. And again, you take a look at that region three, stacked region, Worrell projected to be fifth in his region. As you have Aiden Myers, Teague Foreman, Ethan Rerick and Paxton Nedved ahead of Oral. He's been as ranked as high as number three. Now he's unranked because he's projected as fifth in his region at 44. Um, taking a look at 140, or excuse me, 138. That's Carson Kieser. He's the number three ranked wrestler. 
he will have Sargent. Sargent's a pretty good little wrestler out of Stanley County, ranked number nine. That's the semifinal there, three and nine. Beardsma of uh, Bonholm Avon and even of Parker, the other semifinal. Beardsma ranked six, even dropping from 44 where he was ranked 10. So six and 10 in the rankings. Hey, and I got a great tidbit from 605 Riders. Thanks for listening, first of all, and uh, chiming in. Emmett Maher of Lemon Macintosh, he has to drive 90 miles, approximately 90 miles a day for school and practice. He gets up every morning at 5.30 to go to the gym in Macintosh. Then he practices at Lemon. He was an All-State football player, and man, Rich... When he walks across the mat after a match, he looks like a football player. He, me strong. <laughs> he is built. And that could be an interesting, interesting semifinal with fourth rank Stetson Shelbourne. He could really make a splash with the victory there. I don't know if he's wrestled like his Region 4 opponents. Uh, when you take a look back at Maher, has he wrestled the Colton Niles? Has he wrestled Louis Theory? Has he wrestled Gabe Reeve? Well, there's one way I can find out. I can go to Track Wrestling, just like you can. You can click on their names, and I'm going to go take a look at his season, his high school season. And I can see who his opponents were. There his season comes up. Crossweight. He lost two from Stevens. Pete Cooper Myers. And then he's wrestling up in North Dakota. Loses um, to Rickenbaugh, his only loss to a Class B wrestler, and he hasn't seen anybody else from Region 4. I'm telling you, we'll, we'll see how this goes, but I'm projecting right now Maher wins Region 4, Region 4 champion for the Lemon Mosh Macintosh Cowboys. He is a beast. Um, back to our, our brackets, coming all the way back down to 32 now, which we started with. What an absolute... Rich, I don't know if you heard this, but in the rankings, in the quarterfinals here at uh, 132, number three, Jackson Call, is pinned, and he loses in the quarters. Jeremiah Freeman um, got a victory. Well, here, I'll go back through him. Osborne beats number five, Cage Anderson. And Freeman, number 12, beats Call. Then you have Wenchies, who loses to number two, Low Tech. So in the Wrestlebacks last round, we had the number three, the number five, and the number nine kids in the, cl the class of 132 in the Wrestlebacks, <laughs> which blew me away and started this dialogue. At 126, top-ranked Max Peterson will face... Or Max Brozik will face Asher Peterson, who's back down to 26. Last night we saw him at 32. He is unranked for the Brawlers. In the other semifinal at 26, you have O'Connor and Yonke. And Yonke ranked 10th for Lee Deadwood. He really surprised me. I didn't realize that, and he looked good. In his quarterfinal, did Drew Yonke, and it sets himself up with O'Connor of Custer, who is unranked. At 120, uh, jumping around in the brackets, Trey Weiss, who is ranked number two. Got to believe he's still two. Yeah, I, I said that earlier, so. They haven't changed the ranking since I last said it. Trey Weiss 
in a semifinal against Preheim of Parker. Preheim unranked, but always competitive. I'm always talking about that. Stewie and Bo. And you have Tucker Bo ranked number six. And Stewie of, uh, that's Lance Stewie of Potter County, the battler, unranked. At 113, Tyler Trant is uh, top seed. No, he's not. Nicholas Schlachter is top seed. Schlachter comes in uh, for Potter County. Are you kidding me? He's unranked. Schlachter, 15 and 6, just performed well a couple weeks ago. Oh, he's ranked number two. Schlachter, of course. Mike's boy, Nicholas Schlachter, ranked number two after that great performance at the Mid Dakota Monster. So he is top seed. He's ranked number two. Tyler Trant is ranked number three. He is the two seed. He's got Robbins, Rook and Robbins, Ronkin, and Palsma of Bonhomme Avon trying to punch through some pretty stellar guys. Potential 2 3 finals there in the state. And then at 106, uh, you, you, you get pretty good final possibility. Possibility of number two, Robbins. Ryland taking on Judd Hansen. Let's see who their semis are first before we start talking about that. Robbins, the number one seed, will have Larson. River Larson of Bonholm Avon, who's ranked number seven. And Hansen, Number three, we'll have number four, Gatlin Cordes of the Brawlers in that semifinal. So could get wild there. Thanks for that tidbit on Mar, though, man. That is a hidden gem up there in the northern border. Michael, Yuthi, give me a call if you're listening. I want these tidbits. I don't want to be caught in the dark like this again. It makes me sound goofy. Taking a look at here at the mats, we're rolling through this wrestleback round. It's three o'clock. We are four hours and twenty minutes, twenty-five minutes into this tournament. Brevin Bolander over on the south mat. He leads Blaze Arp of Custer by a score of four to three. And what is interesting about that at fifty-seven? Nope, Arp wasn't ranked. I thought he was the one. Kai Rush. Now 150 was the one that was ranked. Bolander leading 4-3. Tanner Bunker and Thane Beardsma of Bonholm Avon over here on the north mat. And Bunker going to drop that match. Final going to be, nope, it's 12-0 as they go to the third period. I thought it was maybe a tech fall. Beardsma will walk in on that low ankle and that'll be stopped for being potentially dangerous. And the audio goes goofy for no reason. Back in your ox gym, Owen Beckenick of uh, Wagner. He leads 2 nothing over Aiden Forgy of uh, Potter County. Bolander going to pick up the fall for the Winter Warriors. Gets the victory, leading 5-3 over Blaze Darwin. Gets the fall. He'll advance. He is now 9-13 and on the season for the Warriors. Legend Benedict now will come out, the young 8th grader. 8th grader at 165. Talked to uh, Dominique last night. Just mentioned what a nice addition he's been to this lineup. He won, I think he won the JV bracket out at the Rapid City end by the US at 75 behind Kellen. Made the cut down and it has just fit nicely. 
nicely into this lineup for this Warrior team. You know, on talk, you talk about replacing points. Last year, you had Riley Oral and Jack Kruger, state champions from a state runner-up team, squeaked into second ahead of Custer and Phillip to get second last year behind Canton. And how do you replace 52 points in the lineup from two kids? Well, you don't do it with two kids. What winner has done is they have dropped in out of youth that has produced. You've got at 113, Ronkin Robbins. He's got 24, 25 wins on the season at 113. Hudson Peters at 120 has filled nicely. He's, he's a double-digit win in advancing, competing at that 120-pound class. You get Connor Osborne to make the cut deep from 144, where he was ranked number one, all the way down to 132. You have a Division I wrestler's brother who's following in his footstep at 138, and Carson Keyser, 144, Riken Oral, improving and not replacing his brother, but improving on his contributions to that team last year. Revan Bolander, nice addition. He's getting to the double digits here for the Warriors at 157. Gus Bartles has now stepped in when Jude Sargent has went to the sidelines due to concussion protocols. Um, 165 legend, the eighth grader, uh, performing well in his first two tournaments, cuts down, finds a spot. He slots in. Kellen Brozik improving on last year's performance. Still not done, but getting better. And then you look at Mason Curtis at 190. He comes rolling into the lineup with a pedigree, pretty good pedigree. His father in the finals a couple times for the Warriors back when they were winning Class A titles against Stevens and Yankton's and Sturgis's. Nathan, his father. There you get legend with the back trip on that south mat. Um, contributions from Pika. Parker Mathis, you know, young wrestler, jumps in at 215, has won matches, and now Stetson Shelbourne back from injury. And him and Derek Feninga wreaking havoc on the 285 pound weight class in a lot of these tournaments. Benedict leading 7 0. Oh, we, we had something go wrong here, so I'm going to refresh, and there we go. It's back up in a heartbeat. So that's how teams continue to compete. I mean, Philip will have some seniors this year that they're going to have to replace. Uh, how will they do it next year? You got... Burke Blasius, Thane Simons, uh, Kale Krauser will be back next year, but you're going to have to replace Simons and Blasius and Quinn Moon and Jensen Fitch will be back. The Badland Brawlers will have that Riker Peterson at 50. That's three seniors. They're going to have to replace a lot of points there. Canton, you know, so competitive, they're going to have to replace. Got young Carter Kendricks at uh, 13. They don't have anybody ranked right now at 20. Zach Bartles, a junior at 26. You got Shrimp, he's only a freshman. And then you look uh, 32, Ashton Keller, he's a senior at 38. I believe you're going to see Granham down in the future. He's not ranked right now. He's all, well, he is all the way up at 50. We're going to have to replace um, Eason Rice out of that lineup. 65, they don't have anybody at 75. Gavin Nye, he's a senior. 
Carter Krieger at 90, a senior. Richmond, only a junior. Tron Cook, he's a senior. So every year you see teams graduate a lot of points. And how do you do it? The depth of a youth wrestling program, a JV program, a deep wrestling room. Keep things going. Keep, keep replacing them. We're at 175 here in these wrestlebacks. Caleb Shinnebaum leading 2-1 over his opponent, Wyatt Schilling of Stanley County. Ethan Hess, a 9-2 lead over Von Mogan Frankfurt over on the North Mat at 165 back in the auxiliary gym. Bison Hertz of Sully Buttes taking on Anthony Mitchell of Sunshine Bible. Taking a look at some recent <clears throat> results as I was rambling on. Beckenick over Forgy, 10 to 9. Bolander, again, that fall in 446 over Arp. Benedict gets a tech fall, 18 to 1. Bonus points there for the Warriors. Beardsma over Bunker by fall. Hertz over Kaiser. Hertz of Sully Buttes over at Kaiser of Winter, fall in 433. Ziegler of Winter gets the victory by fall in 35 seconds over Ludeman of Stanley County. Stewie picks up a fall over Stone of Parker in a minute 44. Rush, Kai Rush, gets the 9-0 victory. Going to be a fall is Hess. Advances for Lee Deadwood. Here we have a beautiful parking lot, a black F 150 softball plates, 13B658. We need to move it, please. People that are trying to leave can't get out of the lot. Thank you. I know whose pickup that was. So now on the mats, Lane Geisner at 190, taking on Dale Simkel of Burke. Smichael, excuse me, Smichael of uh, Burke Gregory. Dale, eighth grader, taking on the junior and Geisner. Geisner first takedown. Mason Curtis and Jimmy Burma out on the mat. They're scoreless through one. There's that young Mason Curtis I talked about. 17 wins for the freshman as he steps into this varsity role. Freshman at 190. Not going to be as tall as his dad, but uh, his wrestling pedigree is starting to shine. Oh, yeah. 32,000 miles later. There's an article on 60, uh, 605 Sports called 32,000 Miles Later. Emmett Marr. Thanks for that tidbit, Rich. You guys throw so much at me, I can't keep it all straight. Back in the auxiliary gym. 
See if that's current and up to date. It's not. We're way behind there. Looks like Dylan Mead walking out onto the mat. It is. And his opponent is Owen White of Hot Springs. Another Region 4 matchup, criteria match out there in the auxiliary gym. Mead wrestled Moon really well in the quarters. Moon had was 5-3 at the end of one. Moon with the reversal in the fall. Remember Quinn when he was in the 138 pound weight class? Been quite a while ago, huh, Quinn? Weight room years later. <laughs> Quinn is up at 190. Curtis with a takedown leads 2 0. Curtis going to go underneath Burma. Always dangerous because Burma, he is a cradler. You better get hand control in a hurry. Geisner, a 7-2 lead on Smeichel. Mead and White scoreless at the end of the first period. Looks like Mead will go down. Here comes uh, Smeichel. He's going to cut Geisner. Curtis improving. Burma going far side power half. Curtis trying to pop that head out back door. No, Steele made it. Hard to believe this is my first look at Burt Gregory. I know a lot of winter people saw them at that early triangular, but I was out at the Rapid City invite, so this is my first look at a lot of these young storm wrestlers. You know, last weekend, Tri-Valley called off, well, a lot of the tournaments called off because of the weather. That's where I normally get a pretty good look at, like Garrettson. And Garrettson was on our list to be here, and they're not here. That surprises me. I was hoping to see Garrettson today. Um, get to see Tri-Valley, Garrettson, get a look at Canton again. Not that we need another look at them. Curtis will win 2-0. That takedown in the second period, the difference there, I think, that avenges an earlier loss to uh, Jimmy Burma. Burma will fall to 8-8, eight and eight, Curtis to 18-14 and 14 for the young freshman. Up next, Sassaman and Gates. Sassaman of Bonhomme Avon, Gates of Mobridge Pollock, Hunnell and Saxon on your north mat. Saxon of Mobridge Pollock. <coughs> Hunnell of Potter County, a battler. Mead leads 2-0 back in that auxiliary gym. Saxon first takedown, Sassaman a fall. I think that is going to push us to 210, 215. It's going to be Parker Mathis. 
Coming out, he's taking on Calvin Grandin of Stanley County. Mathis 10 and 11, Grandin 1 and 3. Mead still leading 2 0. They go to third period. Parker with the big throw over on the south mat. Okay, once again, southwest side of this building, we have a black F 150 south of the plate, 13B six hundred five eight. You pull in to and nobody in the second row can Sorry about that. Had to get somebody. Get somebody to move their pickup. Blocking traffic here. It's the, the National Guard Armory parking lot. Gergen and Yeager. 285. A couple light heavyweights here on the north mats. Kerner and Trask. A couple mid tax heavyweights out there. They're only at 175 back in the Ox Gym. That's uh, Jordan Drummond and Max Bearshield. Yeah, 175 in the Ox Gym. It's a 2-0 Drummond lead. They're in the second period. Gergen takedown and back points.
Jaeger with the reversal. He'll tighten that up on the north mat, 4-2. Turner leading 5-1 on the south mat, and Trask wants to go down as they go to the second period. Max Bearshield trailing Jordan Drummond 4 to negative 1, according to track wrestling. I'm not sure I quite buy that scoring, but well, yeah, we'll roll with it. 4 to negative 1, that might be a first. Look at this, Jaeger after trailing with the lead and Coach Ringsmeyer coaching over in the corner. Jaeger sees it and boy, gotta tell you, Coach Ringsmeyer, he smiled big but not as big as Braden Jaeger's of Hot Springs. Donald Gergen, you're fine, young man. You were up 4 nothing. Goes right to the coaches, and there's a good conversation happening there also. Gotta tell you, just talked about that just there briefly, but Jason Bridges does such a good job taking over that uh, Parker wrestling room. He's got some good assistance. Parker doing some really good things. And uh, started a couple years ago, and they're just continuing to roll with it. Jason doing a great job over there. Quick fall here on the north mat. Let me wrap that one up. That mat, and if it does, we'll go full screen elsewhere. But Parker talking about them. They're in that always tough region two. Canton stranglehold on there. Howard's been so tough. Coach Andel and McCook Central Montrose. Tri-Valley was a bear over there. Parker rising up. From the depths over there. And uh, got to give credit to uh, Coach Bridges. He was part of it as an assistant. He's got uh, Tanner Even over there, Tate Reiner, who comes over from McCook Central. And don't forget Bob Preheim over there. There we go. 
So only the ox, Jim Roland, for a moment. I'm going to step away and leave the mics on. We'll be back as we move on to the semifinals on Saturday. Semifinal Saturday coming up next.
Well, we promised you semis. Here they are. Going into the semis, winner leads this one right now. 103 and a half to Phillips, 88 and a half. Bonhomme Avon in third with 83. Custer in fourth with 81. For semifinal. Whew. It's tough to run up them steps. <laughs> Again, it's Ryland Robbins, number two in Class B at 106, taking on number seven, River Larson. He leads by a score of four to one. And number three, Judd Hansen and number four, Gatlin Cordes. They are scoreless. They're on the mat trying to score. Oh, nice back trip there by Hansen Cordes, fighting it off. There no points scored yet. Go to the second period on your north mat. River Larson going to defer. Robin's going to go down. Three of the top five kids in the state at 106 are out of region three. Ryland Robbins, two. Judd Hansen, three. Chase Hurd of Miller Highmore Herald fourth. You throw River in there. Four of the top seven with River Larson of Bonhomme Avon out of region three in the top seven. Cordy's kind of the oddball here as he is a region four wrestler. Hanson, Robbins, and Larson. River last year did so many good things, but he was so tiny last year. This year, more of a six pounder fitting in. River, just waspy. <clears throat> Gets on you, hooks those legs in, sinks the barbs, and he's there for the ride. Every once in a while, that camera just goes wild. <laughs> Don't know why. We're on it this time. In a wrestle back at 106 in the Ox Gym, Snyder and Walker, they are scoreless. This is the part of the tournament you call the grind. It's semifinal Saturday. Matches are going to get really competitive. This is a chance for kids who really want to make a name for themselves to do it. You 
make a move in the seedings, the rankings. Rankings mean very little compared to the seedings. This is uh, also state seeding. In the case of that south mat, when you're looking at Hanson and Cordy's, that one's still scoreless. Man, what a good match there. There's the first point score, Judd Hansen, 29-2 and two on the season with the reversal. Robbins, 8-1 lead. They go to the third period. Not quite out of the second period yet. Yeah, they are. Maybe River chose up. Injury time back in that auxiliary gym. Been rolling for a while. Action is resumed between Snyder and Walker. Cordy's now trying to score. He'll get a reversal. That match now four to three. We'll have to check that scoring. It is not updating quick enough, so we will hit refresh. They still don't have it. Five three. They indicate zero zero, but five three. Hansen with the lead on Cordy's, five to three. Now that I know that that's not keeping up online, I'll stay with that match a little closer. See if I can't get off to the side and catch you a time also. Third period, there's 40 seconds to go. 35 seconds now, still no, no point scored. Cordy's pushing action, looks at the clock. Down to 20 seconds. Fifteen and Hansen. We'll get the victory. Five three going to be the final. Make that seven three with the takedown. Great semifinal down there. Robbins and Hansen. I believe they saw each other over at the McCook Central Montrose tournament in the semifinals. That was a sudden victory win for Ryland Robbins. Up next now at uh, 106B on your north mat, Potter County's Easton Roush taking on Jackson Trent. Trent, Trent, excuse me, seven and 15. Roush, 15 and 14. Now 106. Hmm, not sure what that uh, second mat. There they got it to roll finally. I think they got caught watching. 106B semifinal, Memphis Morgan of Custer, 10 and 15, taking on Dane Johnson. Seventh grader out of Burke Gregory, who's 11 and 13. 
Schneider and Walker, they are tied at three in a wrestle back, back in the Ox Gym. Easton Roush going to get the fall on the north mat at the 106B semifinal. We'll move on to the 113 pound semifinal. It's going to be Rook and Robbins, 24 and 8, taking on Tyler Trant, 30 and 4 of Custer. These two wrestled 3 2 the last time they saw each other. was in the duel in Chamberlain. Trent in deep, looking for the cradle. There is a takedown for Trent. Robbins will bail. Nice action. Robbins doing the splits. <clears throat> to avoid giving up back points there. Also a 113 pound semifinal <clears throat> over on mat two, Corbin Palsma. Bonhomme Avon will be taking on Nicholas Schlachter. Schlachter ranked number two. Palsma, I don't believe, ranked at 13. 
Trant, ranked number three. Robbins, unranked. I'm going to tell you, Robbins, unranked, and that's fine. Jackson Carter, 113 in his region, projected to be number one in the region. Daniel Dorsey of Mount Vernon, Plankington, Corsica, Stickney, projected two. Vincent Lenz projected three. That would mean he's four, maybe. But they're not thinking he's going to win a match at state. <clears throat> I disagree. I think he gets a couple. Paul's with first attack over on Schlachter. Schlachter, one of those kids that so long for 113 pound weight class, able to get those hips way back, use those long arms. <laughs> and I haven't really ever watched Mike, his dad, coach from the corner. I'm going to take this opportunity to go ahead and watch him. It's not Scott and all fun, but he's fun to watch. Trant nearly gets the escape. 2-1 the score between him and Robbins. Schlachter working a head lever into a wing over on the south mat. Schlachter is going to get the fall. Nicholas Schlachter on to the finals, rank number two, awaiting either Robbins or Trant. Robbins. Does he pick up two there? He does not. Up next. Oh, they got tracked all messed up over on our south mat. Mike, now that he's done coaching, going to go over there and do some coaching on track wrestling. So while they're doing that, let's go ahead. Give you a look at Ronkin. Rukin Robbins trailing trance. It's ranked number three by a score of two to one. He's gonna keep coming. Gonna keep coming, does Ronkin? The gas tank never quits in that young man. And it looks like we got the other mat ready to roll. They're going to move on to 126 by the looks of things. That's going to be Max and Brosik taking on Asher Peterson of Philip. Max ranked number one. Asher at 26 unranked, wrestled up at 32 last night. Suffered a loss to Connor Osborne, but seems like everybody does lately. Robbins trailing three to one. Trying to get a reversal here. Short time. No, minute 22 to go 
third period is Trant Hatnick escape in the second. Rukin trying to come around, get those hips up. Brozick and Peterson away. 113 wrestle back. Micah Birchfield still rolling. Him and Logan Hansen in the Ox Gym. 3 1. Tyler Trant with the lead. Rukin, hard return. Still has a minute to work with. You'll see some urgency. Steal me that semifinal at 113 on the north end. Bring him back center circle, 3 1. Looked like both wrestlers moved early there uh, before that whistle. Brozick leading 6 2 over Peterson. Short time, under 10 to go. Robin is going to have to let it rip and can't. Tyler Trant, 3-1 this time over Rukin Robbins. Rukin will lay it down. He's all right with that. As is Trant. Rukin, one of those kids you just... If you're not having a good day, you don't want to run into somebody like that. Well, they're ready to roll at 120. North Matt, Trey Weiss, 32 and 3, taking on Colton Freeheim. Weiss ranked number two. Custer goes three and two at 120, 113. Max Brozik leading by a score of six to two. Asher Peterson and him conclude the first period. Weiss putting on a takedown clinic here on the north mat. And we'll take the fall. Right at about the one minute mark. Trey Weiss on to the 120 pound finals. Colton Preheim. He'll go battle back. He always does. That'll bring out Tucker Bow. Really quick to get out there. Tucker Bow, 27 and 6, taking on Lance Stewie, 14 and 10. Bow of the Badland Brawlers. Stewie of the Battlers. Bow ranked number 6. And Class B. Rosick leads 9-2. He's going to put Peterson on his feet, and they're going to do it from there. In the Ox Gym, real quick, that's Trevor Lashowich of uh, Sunshine Bible Academy. He's on bottom and now escaping 7-1 over Morgan Hood of Burt Gregory. Tucker Bow with first takedown.
Tucker walking that double chicken wing over and will get the fall. Unofficially, 47 seconds. Lashowicz gets the victory with a fall in 205 in the back gym. We're going to roll over two mats. Let's go ahead and get that ox gym. That's Huddy Peters and Luke Harris of Lee Deadwood back in the ox gym. Now coming up, Riley Scott. 31 and 5, taking on Jeremiah Freeman of Parker. 18 and 8. Folks, this is that 132 pound weight class. It's goofy. It's stacked, actually. Riley Scott, uh, 132. Ranked number 4. Freeman, number 12. Take a look at that bracket. And Scott, I'm guessing the top seed. No. Low tech top seed. So, who did Scott avoid upset from? Because everybody got upset. Eli Eckroth and Scott going to just toss Freeman. Scott, the three seed at uh, 31 and 5. Freeman was the seven seed who upset the number two seed. Right, Tucker Bow is, I don't like to use the word hearing impaired. Uh, I, I guess he is hearing impaired. He just can't hear a thing on the mat. 605, been talking about that for a couple years. We talked about his accomplishments. I think of the young man from Belfouche who's wrestling, wrestling with only a partial, partially developed leg. Scott gets the fall. Not wasting any time as the three seed with Freeman, who already pulled one upset. Going to get rid of him and on to the finals. Max Brozik leading 16 to 4. We'll get the fall. Up on your north mat, Carson Kieser and Spencer Sargent. This could be a fun one. Didn't get to see it, I don't think, at the Mid Dakota Monster. Maybe they did later. Can't remember. Hmm. Anyhow, Kieser, ranked number three, is 29 and four. Sargent, who wrestled really well, and I didn't realize what sergeant was for Stanley County, the junior, ranked number nine. He had a really nice mid-Dakota monster. Look at this. He's in on a double. And Carson Kieser leads the state in takedowns. He nearly got the takedown. 2-1. These two might just go takedowns on that north mat. They're both pretty darn savvy. Oh, there's Kieser taking over. 4 won the score. Over on your south mat, Drew Yonke, ranked number 10 at 126 of Lee Deadwood. It's 8 and 5, ranked number 10 at 8 and 5. Taking on Ethan O'Connor, Jr. from Custer. O'Connor, 19 and 11 for the Wildcats. That's at 126. And if you step back there, Yonke, 10. I'll keep looking to see if uh, Bame was there and Bame moved up or down. I can't remember. That's why we don't have O'Connor in the rankings. Bame was there in the last rankings. 3 3 between Hudson Peters and Luke Harris. They're back in the auxiliary gym on their feet in the second period. Short time. They might actually now be in the third period. Nope, that's it. There's just no tapper. Huddy gets taken down and let up here. Makes it 5-4. Luke Harris with the lead. The senior wrestling, the eighth grader. You talk about my spiel on replacing parts that graduate. Hudson Peters, the eighth grader, 17 and 12. Didn't realize he was at 17 wins, closing in on 
20 already. Lou Karras, the senior out of Lee Deadwood. With the lead, though, here. <laughs> and him and Huddy get into a wild little scramble. Huddy trying to come out back door. He, does he get the reversal? He does. Huddy takes a 6-5 lead. Keys are a 4-2 lead here on the north mat. Huddy back in the auxiliary gym. Picking up back points. He's going to get his 18th win of the year. Is that one? Well, I shouldn't say that. Still a minute plus to go. Third period. Yankee a 2-1 lead over Ethan O'Connor. Carson with choice will defer. He does have a 6-2 lead. They haven't scored it yet as that one happened right at the end of the period. Hudson, Peters, and Harris, are they 9-9 right now? It's 9-7. And O'Connor gets the lead. Take down 2.64 the score now. Under 10 seconds to go between Harris and Peters. It's 9-7. That's how it's going to end. Hudson Peters, 18 wins from the eighth grader. Legend Benedict, eighth grader at 165. He's got wins in the teens. We talked, how do you replace points? Well, wrestling team is made up of what? 6, 13, 20, 26, 32, 38, 44, 50, 57, 65, 75, 92, 15, and heavyweight, 14 spots. You want to have about three kids in each class that are... Sharp, really good. If you can do that and just stack your lineup with three from every class, because in the lighter weights, you get normally, normally in the lighter weights, they're eighth graders, seventh graders, sometimes in the heavier weights. But again, Hudson Peters, 18 and 12 on the season. Congratulations, Huddy. As he picks up a win. Keezer leading 8-3 to three over Sargent. In this matchup again, number 3. Number 3 versus number 9. And over on the south mat in the semifinal, Yankee 10-4 lead now over Ethan O'Connor. 8-5, O'Connor 19-11, but Yankee is the one that's ranked 10th. And Yonke will get his ninth win of the year. He's on to the finals at 126. He'll face number one in the state, Max Brozik. <clears throat> Up next, Low Tech and Osborne. Boy, at 132, Low Tech ranked number two. Osborne unranked, probably a fifth seed in that region. This could be a semifinal matchup in region three. 
It's how loaded 132 is in Region 3. Low tech in deep and Connor still scrambling. Low tech will get first takedown. He leads 2 0. Keezer, 9 3 lead. Keezer, 29 and 4, looking for his 30th victory. Sergeant shoots and swipes, misses everything. Keezer counters with an underhook. Duck under in a high C for a takedown. 11 3. Keys are now with a major. In your auxiliary gym. Connor Owens of Custer, a 4 0 lead over Case and Barry of Phillip. That'll be the end of the match between Keezer and Sergeant. Final going to be 11 to 4. Sergeant robs the major as he gets the escape and goes on the attack. Carson, another 11 4 victory. He's on to the 138 pound final. Up next at 38, Tyler Beardsma. Uh, Bonhom Avon taking on Michael Even of Parker. This is going to be a fun one. Beardsman comes in 22 and 4 and 138. He is going to be ranked uh, number 6 in the most recent poll, projecting to finish third in Region 3. And Even coming down from 144 to 138, ranked 10th at 44. He'll be in that Region 2. It's hard to see if he'll slot in behind Richter or behind Swenson of Chester. With him coming down, he could be two or three. Michael even likes to put up points. He's another one. Big engine. Low Tech and Cosborne, 2-1. That one is, saw that first attack by Low Tech, counter. Um, I went away from it. Now it's 2-2. Two, two. Underway in the auxiliary gym, Weston Birma, 8th grader at 126, taking on Stanley County's Landon Beam. There's Landon. Beam at 26 was ranked... Is that 32 or 26? Whitmire's. Well, Bame is at 26, and. No, well, Bame is ranked ninth, and he's back in the auxiliary jump. Low tech, 3 1 lead on Osborne. Still scoreless on your north mat. And scoreless through the end of one back in the auxiliary gym. Low tech and Osborne, 51 seconds to go, second period, 3-1. Low Tech ranks second, Osborne unranked. Boy, these guys, hand head fights. 
Osborne with the attack. Low tech with the counter. Go to the second period here on the north mat. Even in Beardsma, scoreless. And that's ironic when I talk about Michael even putting up all those points. He finally gets one with an escape. He leads Beardsma, Beardsma by a score of 1-0. to zero. Low Tech, another takedown. They corrected the score. It's 2-2. Two, two. And give Low Tech the takedown for a 4-2 lead. Beersma going to catch even. He leads two to one. Can he get the fall here on the North Mat? Even rank 10 at 44. Beersma 6 at 38. That tight headlock is tight. There it is. Beersma will advance to the finals. Even goes into the wrestlebacks. Well, folks, you finally get to see who I've been bragging about. Miles Renner of Lee Deadwood coming out on that north mat with the maroon. Singlet. He's ranked number two at 44. I've really been impressed with him. And what he did up at the Mid-Dakota Monster. His opponent here is Lathan Gabriel, 15 and 10 sophomore. And there you can see Renner is so physical. Man, he's like a buzzsaw. Energizer Bunny never quits going, just comes at you, and it, he's looking to throw. Renner will get the fall in 35 seconds. Low Tech now leading 7-2. to two. Got an escape and a takedown. Up next at uh, 144, is it going to be? No. One fifty. Riker Peterson and Gus Bartles. Peterson 12 and 2. Rank number 2, Gus Bartles 16 and 12 for the Warriors. Osborne with an escape, 7 3. Low tech with the attack. Osborne fighting it off. And there's the 2. 9-3, Karsten Lotek over Connor Osborne. Lotek on to the finals at 132. Up next on uh, your south mat. Let's see where that semifinal takes us. It's going to be 144. Leighton Sander, I believe, ranked 12 in the most recent poll. He is for Custer out of Region 4, sitting behind top two in Region 4 are Chase Palacios and Miles Renner. Renner, who you just saw. Leighton Sander slotting in at three. Oral, unranked. And uh, sitting behind Aiden Myers, Tegan Foreman, Ethan Rarick, and Paxton Nedved in that region three so he's probably about a five seed in his region Riker Peterson with a takedown leads 2-0 Oral 
picks up a takedown. Birma leading Bame by a score of three to two in the auxiliary gym. Bartles trailing two zero, but uh, trying to counter that Peterson. There's Peterson with a Peterson roll, no pun intended. Not necessarily labeled after him or his brothers, just for nothing now, Peterson. And he is going to walk into a standing cradle. Riker has it tight, Gus trying to kick that leg and peel the hands. Peterson's going to get four, three for the near fall, one for the stoppage. Gus, that was so tight on that carotid artery. He was turning red and blacking out. And Dozark wisely stops it, awards the fourth point for stopping a pinning hold. That'll make the score eight to nothing. <coughs> Excuse me. Sander and Oral are in the second period. Oral leading 2-0. Oral goes for, guess what? Peterson Roll gets the two and attacks the head over on that south mat. And Sander going to flip over. And they're going to go out of bounds. In your auxiliary gym there at 132, a wrestle back. Jackson Call, ranked number three, taking on Eli Eckroth back in that auxiliary gym. Oof. Ranked number three, and in a wrestle back. And if you're Eli Eckroth, you didn't expect to see this man coming through the wrestle box, but he is. Let's kind of tell you what kind of career I had when I was young. I'd always try to predict who was coming back at me as I moved through the wrestle box because I always drew the wrong guy the first round. And it was amazing when you'd see those upsets and you'd be like, what? <laughs> Great. <laughs> now I get a tiger who's had his tail trimmed. Mm. Oral did get the reversal and a two-point near fall. Leads six to zero on the south mat. Peterson still leading 10-0. Third period here with Gus Bartles. Gus being game. Oh, don't pull him back onto you. That'll be a tech fall or a pin for Riker. The number two ranked 50 pounder here on the north mat. 
That's how this match is going to end. 15 to nothing. Riker Peterson with the tech fall. So we're going to flip over the north mat to Kale Krauser at 157. Kale ranks number three, I believe, if I, my memory is holding. That is correct. He's number one in his region, projected to be. Taking on Kale Hill, who's unranked in region, out of region three for the Wagner Red Raiders at 157 ahead of Kale. This is odd because, well, Jet Breen is up at 65 today. Kale into the lineup at 57. So you've got Wyatt Anderson, Jackson Saba, Ryder Rollins, and Kale in that mix. Somewhere, probably around a four seed if he stays there and Breen stays at 65. Oral still leading Leighton Sander by a score of six to one. Remember, Oral unranked Sander, ranked number 12 at 44. Leighton projecting to come out of that region four as the number three seed. Oral projecting in region three as a five seed, which is why you don't see him in the rankings. He's gonna have to leapfrog somebody. Krauser, a takedown, and ooh, he is. Kale able to somehow kick those hips over, get out of that pinning combination. He'll be down 5 0. Oral now leading 8 to 2. Folks, we got another good one in the Russellback room. At 132, that is the number five kid in the state, Gage Anderson. He just happens to be wrestling the number nine kid in an elimination match. Five versus nine in the state in an elimination match. Consolation quarters. Up next on your south mat, top ranked Riley Roberts at 150, 25 and five, taking on Zade Seaman. Eighth grader out of Lee Deadwood. Anybody out of Lee Deadwood right now is dangerous because those kids are learning. They're be gi given tools to make them competitive with anybody at any time. The eighth grader, uh, Seaman, 15 and 9 on the season. He'll give up first takedown. He trails 2 0, but there you see him almost hold Roberts. And there he does get those hips up and over. Nearly sinks the barbs, the legs, for a reversal and back points on his cheap tilt attempt. Krauser, the young man that came from Douglas Rapid City Christian New Underwoods wrestling program in Douglas High School. Well, maybe New Underwood. Um, now in the Phillip or the Badland Brawler wrestling room. He was a nice addition. He's ranked three, winning seven to nothing and picking up more backfall, near fall points here on Keel Hill. He's cruising at this point. He feels comfortable. He'll unhook, take the three, leads 10 to nothing.
Robert's going to get cautions. Maybe throttling that left elbow. That's where you grab it and twist it backwards. He leads 2 nothing. Minutes to go in that first period. Krauser, 12 nothing, going to the third period. Krauser with a takedown. One point away from a technical fall, and he immediately sinks a chicken wing. And he will horse this over. Does he get the fall, or does he take the tech fall? He's going to take a tech fall. Nope, still hooked up. There's the tech fall. Kill Krauser goes to 30 and two. Kill Hill will fall to nine and 12 in the wrestlebacks. Up next, Saba and even. At 157, Roberts still only leading two to zero. Over Seaman. Anderson and Wenchies 4-2 in that elimination match, and that's going to be a final. Wenchies going to lose 4-2. Gave it his all, but he's eliminated early. Anderson will move on. Up next back there is going to be Kaiser and Hayes at 138 in the auxiliary gym. Kaiser of winner, Ash an 11 and 10 freshman taking on Mecky Hayes, a 14 and 12 senior from Lee Deadwood. Jackson Saba at 157, taking on Andrew Even of Parker, Saba of Bonhomme Yvonne, if you're not familiar with that name. I just assume people hear Saba and they go, oh yeah, he's from Bonhomme. Jackson, a Seventh ranked senior and his opponent Andrew Even, ranked number four. Number four versus number seven here on your north mat. Beautiful duck under by Saba. Countered exceptionally well by even North Matt here in the armory looked like it was going to be an easy two maybe five point throw and even counters and will pin Saba Andrew even on to the finals at 157 he'll face Kale Krauser number three and four in the state Saba back to the wrestlebacks Buseman and Simons on deck. Simons at 165. He is ranked number three. Taking on number 12, Dylan Buseman. And Simons with first takedown leads two to zero.
and Simons will get the fall in 55 seconds. He is on to the finals at 65. Up next, number five, Colton Volchek. Taking on number six, Kellen Brozik at 175 on your north mat. Volchek comes in with a record of 22 and eight. Brozik 21 and nine. Roberts leading eight to zero. Brozik with the takedown. Does he get the fall? Five nothing lead for Kellen Brozik. Roberts. 12-1, taking control of that match with Seaman. No takedown, Volchek with a deep shot in uh, <laughs> Looked like he had it in there. Rosick's free and leads six to one. Roberts gets the victory over Seaman. He'll advance to the 150 pound final. Up next on your south mat, Jet Breen, 21 and three, currently ranked number two at 57. Gonna take on Colton Brady at 65, who steps in 
And Colton currently unranked at 65. Brozick with a takedown at the buzzer. That'll make it eight to one. Green with a quick takedown, gives an escape, gets another takedown, leads by a score of four to one. Taking a look in that Ox gym real quick. Mecky Hayes will get the victory seven to five. No, he still leads blood time. He's leading by a score of seven to five over Ash Kaiser. Volchek with a reversal as this one's under 30 seconds. Brozik leads 8 to 3. Breen leads 6 2. Under 20 to go. And that'll be a final. Kellen Brozik on to the finals. Eight to three over number five, Colton Volchek at 175. Ryder Bailey awaits possibly in the finals. He'll have Connor even at some point over on the south mat, it looks like. Yep, next match after Breen and Brady. This will be a good one. Gannon Knabel and Isaiah Crown over Knabel number two in the state from the Wagner Red Raiders. And Isaiah Crown over number six for Bonhomme Avon. I think Gannon's still in the weight room even after football season. <laughs> Gannon looks good. Quarterback for the Red Raiders. <clears throat> I have a picture from two 10 year olds, Gannon Knabel and Kellen Brozick watching the state finals mat side they snuck inside the ropes and the referees let them and those two made a pact that uh, they would both wrestle at a state finals not necessarily against each other they've wrestled twice in their career gannon a couple wins against kellen but maybe three 
but I still have that photo of those two kids just sitting mat side and said, someday this can be us. Gannon at number two on track to get to a final. Kellen just defeats number five and we'll have either Bailey or even in the finals. Gannon leading 7-0 here on Isaiah Crownover. Of course, the Crownovers. You got Boots, who everybody remembered as the six foot six Albatross between 185 and 195 years ago. Isaac just graduated, having a great football career, great safety in running back. <clears throat> but he was also a great wrestler, him and Jack Kruger. So many great matches. And now Isaiah making a name for himself. Broke onto the scene as a seventh grader, like at 165 when the classes were different. Here he is as a freshman. It's a 190-pounder. Gannon leads 10 nothing. Jet Breen, not too bad himself. Neither is Colton Brady. I take any, if I was going to start a football team and needed running backs, I'd start with probably these two. I wouldn't be afraid to start with either one of these two on my squad. They're both pretty good wrestlers also. Breen 21-3, and three, Brady 13-5. Breen with another takedown will take a 15 to 4 lead back in the auxiliary gym that is Calvin Saba another Saba coming through taking on Taos Weborg of Burt Gregory at 138 Saba leads 4 to 1 Well, Ryder Bailey made quick work of that semifinal at 175. Gets a takedown, and he's on to the finals where he will face Kellen Brozick, number two and six in the state. And now you move on to a rematch of last night, one versus number one versus number four, Levi Weeman, 31-0. Taking on Jensen Fitch, who's 17 and 2, suffered a loss last night to Weeman. It's 5 5 with 10 seconds to go, and Weeman gets the takedown. Nothing against Jensen Fitch here, but 
at all because I really like Jensen, really reserved young man. But I think everybody wants to see Rick and Bob Weeman and Jensen's here saying, hey, wait a minute. Do not forget about me. I am Big Red. <laughs> Weeman collects a takedown. Does he get near fall out of this? Yeah, he is. Does he get a fall out of this? He does. Levi Weeman going to get the fall. Minute 13. Team. Gannon Knabel still leading 14 to nothing, grinding on Isaiah Crown over. Isaiah not giving up though. He's keeping this one close. And that'll be the final 14 to 0. Okay, here's Maurer. Uh, I'm telling you, keep an eye on that south mat. Going to try bringing these up. Stetson Shelbourne ranked fourth. 22 and 10. Emmett Maher, 14 and 2, unranked from Lemon McIntosh. 605 has been raving on him since this fall. I watched him first round and I was like, oh my goodness. He's got two losses. Uh, Rapid City Stevens. And that's it. here on your north mat, Jed Eklund doesn't want to be forgotten. He's the number three 190 pounder. Taking on Quinn Moon. Quinn checks in, I think we said what, number nine? Yeah, Moon, number nine. Yeah, as these rounds, we got, we're way behind. Wrestleback's being very competitive. They're only at 144, plus there's half the mats back there. So as this round concludes, you'll see a lot of Wrestleback matches move into here, and then we'll get to the consolation semi-round immediately after that. Eklund in deep. Moon trying to stuff that uh, fireman's carry, and he cannot jet. Good to see him going low, shift levels. He liked to stay up high on the head. People knew that. Coach Webster, Dad Webster, got him using that arm, holding the elbow and going underneath, shifting levels, getting to the legs. Nice fireman's there. Jet, 2 nothing. his lead. Maher and Stetson Shelbourne. They go scoreless through the first. And taking a look in the back right now, Jed Blair trails Carlin Hopkins of Andy Central 6-0. Blair 7-7, seven and seven. Hopkins 14-12 at 144 pounds. Moon with his own attack. Jet will get the hips back and counter with the Wizard. Score at the end of one, 2 1. Chet Eklund over Quinn Moon, number three over number nine. Did Blair just come from behind and get the pin? I gotta go check that. No, Hopkins got the pin.
Oh, my. Jed Blair did come from behind and got the victory at 144. That's a beautiful thing, a DVR on these things. You can do that. Eklund Neat leads 4-1. Shelbourne with an escape leads 1-0. Moon with the attack. Trailing 4-1. to one. Now Brock Kotelik at 144. Bonhomme Avon taking on Jaden Bolt of Bonhomme Avon. Back in your auxiliary gym. Stetson Shelbourne leading Maher by a score of one to zero. Second period is going to tick away. Maher will choose to go down against Shelbourne. He trails 1 0. <laughs> I did nothing with my audio. It's just in and out. We're going to have to check the audio cards this week. It's crazy. Eklund leads 7-1. to one. Shelbourne and Maurer. I didn't even see Maurer get out. That's how fast it was. 1-1. One, one. Maurer in on the single. Stetson using that weight. Maurer's been at 215. Nice job by Stetson staying out of that. Interesting. Eklund looking for the fall. Does he get it? He's got both barbs kicked in and gets the fall on Quinn Moon. Judd Eklund officially. Four minutes and 54 seconds. We get Knabel versus Eklund. Number two versus number three in the state for the finals tonight here at the Winter Quarterback Club Invitational. Up next. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> well, they have it wrong on track wrestling. Maher being taken down by Shelbourne He's going to get a 3-1 victory. Impressive victory by Stetson over Maher. He will be back. Maher will fall to 14-3. Shelbourne, 23-10. Caleb Rickenbaugh and Severin are actually on the mat here on your north mat. There we go. They got it fixed. Zane Severin, 26-5. Severin is ranked at uh, two. Severin ranked number eight. Rickenbaugh number two. And just as I said about Jensen Fitch, no offense, but I think everybody wants to see Weeman Rickenbaugh. <laughs> Derek Feninga in a semifinal taking on Kate Braun. Brown of uh, Burt Gregory. Brown, Brown, <laughs> it's Brown. It is 25 and 7. <clears throat> Derek Fenanga, 12 and 9. Derek, an eighth place finisher last year in his first year ever of wrestling, had 285.
you can tell Cade's wrestling light compared to Derek, but can he get to 215? Don't know. Look at that. Peek out. He'll get a takedown. Leads 2-0. Rickenbaugh leads by a score of 5-1. to one. Oh yeah, I know my, my audio cut out completely. Had a conversation up here with my son that you guys can't hear. <laughs> Fenango with a reversal. He is using that 285 pound frame trying to get back points. Did he? He did. He's got three. He'll lead at least five to two. Does he try a late throw here? Does not. Five three the score. Brown and Feninga. Brown will go down. Severin being scrappy over here on the north mat. Trail seven to two, they're neutral. And he's in on a single. Everybody I talked to at the Mid-Dakota Monster said, Zane Severin is the strongest man in the state. You just can't see it by looking at him. They said he is incredibly strong. It's like trying to fight a, a fire hydrant. You just can't move him. Not easily. Rickenbaugh has for seven. Feninga and Brown tied at 5-5. Five, five. Taking a look at uh, Region 3, both Brown and uh, Feninga in Region 3. Shelbourne's the number one seed. Feninga's JV, so he's not eligible as Rickenbaugh gets a takedown. The two seed would be Aiden Novak of Mount Vernon, Plakington, Corsica, Stickney, Randall Powers of Bonholm Avon, who I believe is in this tournament, would be the three seed. And Mathis Riesel of Miller Heimar Herald would be the four. So you take a look at 285. I gotta know. Nope, somehow I got into the wrong tournament. Leave me alone, I was in the correct tournament. sent me to a tournament right now up in Shadron. I don't know how that happens. So yeah, you're not going to see one, one of the pre people that I talked about that you're not seeing here is Randall Powers. The sophomore from Bonhomme Avon not wrestling today. Still 5-5 five, five on that north end. Rickenbaugh 11-2 over Zane Severin. Got to believe Rickenbaugh pretty powerful also. In your oxygen, they're at 150. Ivan Stewie leading three to two over Clayton Beckenick. Beckenick now with a cradle though, looking to get the fall.
They go to the third period. Tied on the south end, Brown and Feninga. Looked like Feninga was out and free and maybe going to get a reversal. Nice counter by... Going to be blood time down there. Rickenbaugh gets a major decision by a score of 11 to 3. And we're going to roll over to Rasselback matches. Bolander, Brevin, taking on Trey Ziegler at 157 here on your north mat. They're at 150 back in the Ox Gym. Stewie leading 6 2 over Pancrats of Parker. Team scores after this conclusion of the Brown versus Fenanga match. Winner right now on top with 177. Phillip in second with 145 and a half. Custer in third with 131. And Bonhomme Yvonne in fourth with 110. Bolander with first takedown on his teammate Ziegler. He leads 2-0. to zero. Getting an echo here in my. There's where I heard the echo. That should clean me up a little bit on my end. Bolander takes a five to nothing lead and make it six zero. Fenango with a reversal. Minute to go. He leads seven to five. Looking for oh Brown with a beautiful reversal to tie it. No, he trailed nine seven. Winner hoping for an all warrior final between Shelbourne and Fenanga Brown desperately trying to make up this two points here on Fenanga. Under 20 to go. And Feninga will hold on for a 9-7 victory over Cade Brown. What a match. Cade finishing well. Derek holding on. It'll be Shelbourne and Feninga. All wrestlebacks from here on out. I'm going to leave you with track wrestling in the audio. We'll be back here in a moment.
the conclusion of this round, we'll take a quick break and get the next round loaded up and we'll turn to the consolation seminars.
said anything at email. Okay, we're ready. We got the mass assignments for the next one loaded up. We'll jump right into Constellation Semis. South map cable workers report.
Welcome back here to Winter South Dakota. <clears throat> Consolation semifinals taking place on all three mats. So we've got them all rolling now. This will determine who wrestles, wrestles, wrestles for third and fourth Constellation Championship or fifth and sixth. At 106 currently, scoreless between River Larson, 19 and 6 from Bonhomme Avon, ranked number 7. And Cannon Snyder, the 8th grader out of Phillips, who's 9 and 10. On your south mat, that's Maxwell Anderson. Max Anderson, the 13 and 11 8th grader. Digging on 4th ranked Gatlin Cordes, the freshman out of Phillips, who's 25 and 7. See if that will clean this up a little bit. Moving along quickly back in the auxiliary gym. Quick win back there as we look at Anderson and Cordy's 5 1. This is anything. Like the previous round of Wrestlebacks, it was fierce, competitive. This could be a long round. Scoreless here between Larson and Snyder. You could end up with number four and seven in the state wrestling each other for third and fourth, quite possibly. The way it looks at yeah, 120 in your auxiliary gym. That's Colton Preheim. He is wrestling against Trevor Lashowitz of Sunshine Bible Academy. Lashowitz, five and seven on the season. Anderson and Cordy's 10 1. Cordy's with the lead. River Larson in deep, countered with a wizard. By Snyder. Cordy's pouring it on now. He leads, I believe, 12 to 1. Preheim leading at 120 by a score of 5 to 0. River Larson now with a pinning combination hooked up on Snyder. It's that headlock. Just gonna let it go. Boy, River bouncing on that shoulder of Snyder's. Cannot get the fall. He does have that three point near fall. It puts him in the lead three to zero, and that will. Hmm, that's wrong. That's the end of the match, and it never updated. So, track struggling a little bit. The final there was 2 0, River Larson.
on your south mat. That's Rook and Robbins unranked 24 and 9, taking on Chance Wagner, Phillip unranked 10 and 10. Yeah, 113 taking the mat. It's going to be Palsma, uh, Bonhomme Avon. And his opponent is Birchfield from Hot Springs. Corbin 19 and 11. Birchfield 8 and 15. And blood time back in the auxiliary gym as Colton Preheim has a 9 to 1 lead over Trevor Lashowitz. Robbins with a two to nothing lead. Paulsma with a two nothing lead. And still blood time back in that auxiliary gym. Taking a look back there, they're under three minutes to go in blood time. Again, consolation semifinals, finals, semifinals, finished finals are set. Winner with 193 points, Phillip with 145 and a half. Custer in third with 137, and Bonhomme Avon sitting fourth with 116. Robbins, a 6-2 lead over Chance Wagner. Blood time back in that auxiliary gym is under a minute. It's Preheim that's bleeding. As you can see, Lashowicz is awaiting to see if he's able to continue. And that would be awful. That would be a first for me if I saw a blood time run out. <clears throat> Robbins, another takedown. He leads 8-2. to two.
Palsma gets the victory. Hudson Peters going to take the mat at 120. He'll be on your north mat. His opponent, Lance Stewie. Robbins gets the fall. He will pin Chance Wagner. Robbins will wrestle for third and fourth. Up next, Asher Peterson versus Barry. Teammates. Hudson Peters, first takedown. Does he have it? Yes, he does. Needs 2 nothing over Stewie. Huddy, that eighth grader who's got 18 wins, looking to get to 20. Stewie will get the escape. Leads by a score of two to one. Does Huddy Peters. Taking a look in the Ox Gym. They are finally wrestling again. Preheim still leads in third period, 11 to seven. Did not run out of blood time, but man, that match has been going a long time. That had to have been like an eyebrow cut that they were trying to seal or a bridge of the nose type cut. Hudson Peters, Huddy, leads four to three in the second period. It's final, Preheim holds off Lashowitz. Final 13 to eight. Next up in that Ox gym, Weston Birma of Bonhomme Avon. He's an eighth grader, he's 10 and seven. Taking on Ethan O'Connor, Custer Wildcat. Junior comes in with a record of 19 and 12. Hudson will have choice. He'll go down here in the third period. Leading 4-3, to three, Asher Peterson, a 4-0 lead over Kaysen Berry, his teammate on the south mat. Mm. Stewie had that cradle hooked up, horsed it straight back. Huddy leg over, almost caught the head. Boy, that's a good job of defensive wrestling. Good job by Stewie with the cradle. Huddy with just a nice counter.
is Dewey going to put him on his feet? Him being Hudson Peters. Gets a nice clean look on a shot. It's a double leg. Huddy trying to counter. Going low ankle. And Stewie has a takedown. That'll tie that match on the north side of the gym. 5-5. Five, five. There is a cradle from Stewie. And that looks to be enough to punch him through to the consolation semis. As you can see, the tapper is out there. Good work late there by Stewie to come from behind. And he'll get an 8-5 to five victory. Up next, Sergeant and Hayes. Spencer Sergeant and Mecky Hayes. At 138, Sergeant ranked ninth at 138. Hayes unranked. Still 4 2. Asher leading his teammate, Barry. Asher will get the victory by a score of four to two over his teammate. We'll take a look at the south side of the gym. And it's 132 pound matchup. I'm guessing it's another couple ranked wrestlers who were knocked off in the quarterfinals. We'll find out here in a second. Yeah, it's only number five. Gage Anderson taking on number 12, Jeremiah Freeman. Freeman with an upset of Jackson Call in the quarterfinals. And that 3 versus 12 matchup shook up this bracket. As did Connor Osborne's victory over Gage Anderson in the quarterfinals. And the collateral damage was Wyatt Wenchies ranks number 9 being eliminated by number five Anderson in the second round wrestlebacks. Just a crazy bracket here today at 132 for these kids. Sergeant with a takedown. Sergeant now leading 4-0. Anderson, he uh, covers Freeman to start the second. And we know the audio is a little crisp right now, crackly. Been in and out. We're going to have to check audio cards this week. Update those. Spencer Sargent has a little bit of a gash, or a nick, I should say, underneath that left eye. Kelly Hofer, the new athletic trainer here at uh, Winter Regional Healthcare. Over there, 
Getting out the super glue. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant right back at it, <clears throat> throwing Mecky Hayes right to his back, and maybe splits it right back open. Don't know how valuable athletic trainers are to your program until you need one and you don't have one. <clears throat> Four nothing, Sar or four one, Sergeant over Mecky Hayes, Gage Anderson and Freeman still scoreless. Freeman having a whale of a tournament. And trails now one nothing. But uh, you take a look here, and him and Anderson, he knocked off number three Jackson Call. Nice little hip toss there by Gage Anderson. Doesn't want to suffer another defeat. We'll get a two point takedown and a two point near fall there on Freeman. That'll put him up comfortably 5 0. But again, Freeman still with a nice tournament for the Parker Pheasants. Sergeant and Mecky Hayes, third period. They're coming down to the wire. Give you a look at that one, a little bit of a close up there. There's the escape, 4 3. Mecky Hayes of Lee Deadwood in that maroon singlet, still trailing. Make it 6 3. Oh, nice effort there by Mecky. I don't mind that. Knowing he needed a big one. Went for it and didn't get it. Spencer Sargent on to the Constellation Championship. Mecky Hayes representing himself and his school's program well by going for it. Up next, Saba and Even. And at 138. Michael Even <clears throat> ranked 10th at 144. And Saba at 138. No, we had Beardsman ranked, so Saba must be the JV wrestler. Anderson, 7 1 victory over on the South Mat. That'll bring up Jed Blair. Trailed in his last round of wrestling and came from behind and got the pin. His opponent, Lathan Gabriel, 15 and 11, Badland Brawler. Speaking of Brawler, look at even. Quick takedown, looking for the fall here on Saba.
Gabriel with first takedown on Blair. He leads 2-0. Kai Rush at 150 and Gus Bartles wrestling back in the auxiliary gym. At 150, Kai Rush, ranked number seven. Gus Bartles unranked. Bartles comes in with a record of 16 and 13. Kai Rush ranked number seven, 17 and 15. Scoreless first period between Rush and Bartles. Michael even with a reversal and looking to stack up a suitcase cradle here. He'll get the fall. Official time, 1 minute 34 seconds. 10th ranked Michael even at 144. He advances to the Constellation Championship at 138. At 150, Zade Seaman of lead, Deadwood. We'll take off, take on Pankratz of Parker. Bartles is scoreless with Rush. In the second period, he is chosen down 30 seconds into that period. Gabriel leading Jed Blair by a score of three to zero. Bartles with an escape. No, Bartles with the reversal. Rush with the escape. Bartles leads two to one in that ox gym. Clayton Pankratz, 11 and 13 freshman for the Parker Pheasants at 150. This is Clayton, not Riley. Riley ranked number eight. Gabriel looking to pin Blair. Going to pick up a three-point near fall. Now leads eight to zero. Pankratz will defer with a two-nothing lead. Siemens got that shoulder taped up. He is going to go down. No, nope, he's going on his feet. Blair trailing Gabriel by a score of eight to zero in the third. Bartles and Kai Rush still two one. That one in the second period. Bartles going to the third period, it looks like. He may take a 2-1 lead into that third period. Pankrat's going to get sealed up. He kind of nicked on the inner portion of his elbow. He got, well, no, he didn't get nicked. That was just blood from, <laughs> oh, Zade Seaman. He's been getting his shoulder taped up. Now he's getting that nose plug, getting a little drink of water. Looks like Rocky Balboa and one of the 
Rocky movies. It's just, does he have that comeback? Gabriel will get the victory. Now coming to the mat. It's going to be Brevin Bolander and Kale Hill. One used to live in Winter and moved away. One used to live in Burke and moved to Winter. <laughs> Kale, 9 and 12. Brevin Bolander, 10 and 13. Kale with a takedown, Bolander with an escape. Pankratz and Seaman, 2-2. Two, two. Gus Bartles leading 2-1, to one, third period, about 40 to go. Gus trying to get a victory over seventh-ranked Kai Rush at 150. On your south mat, Bolander and Kale Hill, they go to the second period. 2-1, Kale is going under. Bolander will cover. <laughs> Gus Bartles looking for his 17th victory, 25 seconds away. Hard return of Kai Rush. Keep an eye on that ox, Jim. Kai Rush. Oh, with a reversal. And does he get back points at the end, or does Bartles come out? I think Kai Rush just scrambled and got a victory over Gus Bartles. And a wild finish over in that ox, Jim. It was Kai Rush with the victory, the reversal, 3-2. Don't think there was any back points there. Bolander trailing 3-1, but amping it up here, different level. Minute 13 to go in the second period on the south mat. Now Jackson Saba at 157, 22 and 6, taking on Owen Beckenick of Wagner. Saba ranks seventh. He's back in that ox gym. Beckenick unranked. Pankratz and Seaman, 2-2. Two, two. Seaman trying to come from behind. Has that crossbody Turk on Pancrats. Let's see who's going to win this one. I think this one's overtime. It is overtime. Zade and Clayton 2-2. Two, two. Couldn't get those back points. Almost had them. But look who the aggressor is late. And this is Zade Seaman. There's the shot. Pankrat's countering with a low ankle. And a takedown by Clayton Pankrat's get the victory in sudden victory. 
Mountains, Aiden Seaman will wrestle for fifth and sixth. Up next on your north mat, Colton Brady and Legend Benedict. Neither one of these two young men ranks. Take a look. Colton comes in 13 and 6. Legend in the eighth grader with 12 victories for the winner wrestling team. Eighth grader at 65 with 12 victories. In your ox gym, Saba leading 10 to 5 over back and neck of Wagner. Team points, just taking a look if anybody's going to make a run. Philip in, is making a little bit of a move. They've picked almost 20 points up here in this consolation semifinal. Winner leads with 198. Philip on the march with 162 and a half. Bonholm making a move. They're at 143. They pass Custer, who sits in fourth with 142. Kill Hill. 9-2, make it 11-2, his lead over Bolander. It is a final back in the uh, Ox Gym. Let's go ahead and pull up our next match back there. Connor Even taking on Caleb Shinnebaum. Even 17 and 16 on the year. Shinnebaum 11 and 9. Brady leading Benedict by a score of 5 to 0. Brady goes low ankle. Outside single and looking to return it. He'll get the takedown. He leads 7-0. In your south mat, a couple of young kids. Freshman Hunter Coons of Hot Springs ranked 10th right now. He made the cut from 175. Said he weighed, was getting four pounds. He was only weighing 169. Decided to make the drop this week. He ranked 10th at 165. Dylan um, Boosman, similar, you know, tweener between 65 and 75. Walking weight closer to 65. Connor coming, going 75. But take a look at these records for these freshmen. Hunter Coons, 26 and 10. In that blue singlet, Dylan Boosman, the freshman for the Parker Pheasants, 25 and 11. Almost identical win percentages. Colton Brady picking up back points. And we'll get the fall. Official time going to be two minutes and 53 seconds. Legend will wrestle for fifth and sixth. Colton Brady for the Consolation Championship. Up next, Ethan Hess and Colton Volchek. Volchek ranked number five will take on Ethan Hess, who was ranked number five a couple weeks ago. Had a rough Mid-Dakota Monster and now no longer in the rankings. You'll see him in there next week, my guess. Tomorrow night or Monday, whenever they come out.
Coons. Trying to get the reversal. Gets a two point near fall, so he was on top. That, uh, no, it was 2 2. Shinnebaum leading Connor even by a score of 5 to 2. Back in your auxiliary gym. And scoreless between Hess and Volchek. All right, let's update the scores. We just went second period here on the north mat. Ethan Hess and Volchik. They are scoreless. Hunter Coons leads 10 to four over Dylan Buseman. Moon a 4 nothing lead in blood time back in the Ox Gym. Crownover doesn't get the takedown. Looked like he had it over there on the edge of the mat. Scoreless, him and Dylan Mead. Looks like a lead Deadwood on home Avon duel right now here on the purple and gold mats at the National Card Armory.
Yes, it will pick up two. Volchak leads seven to three. And that will be a final. Ethan Hess will wrestle for fifth and sixth. Colton Volchek will wrestle in the Consolation Championship against Connor Even. Hess will have Shinnebaum. Up next, Jensen Fitch, rate number four for the Badland Brawlers, the junior 17 and three. He'll take on Cody Sassaman, a junior from Bonhomme Haven, who is 17 and 11. Crown over leads one nothing over Dylan Mead. Crownover takes a 3-0 lead with a takedown, just as I mentioned his escape. Quinn Moon still rolling. Lead 6-0 over Curtis in the third period. I think these two might have wrestled back in the first round, if I'm not mistaken. Fitch with a quick, quick fall. Yeah, Mason Curtis and Moon wrestled 7-1. First round, 6-1 here with a minute to go in that consolation semifinal. Make it 8-1 as Moon counters the attack of Curtis. Make it 8 nothing. And more as Moon going to get a cheap tilt for at least two. Here on your north mat, Consolation Semi, Riley Kerner, 9 and 14 sophomore, unranked, taking on Cade Brown. Senior for Burt Gregory, he is 25 and 8. Yes, and Cade has seen most of his matches down at 215. Has chose to bump up. See how he does against the big guys.
Turner <clears throat> has an escape. He leads one to zero. Crown over a five nothing lead on Dylan Mead in your Ox Gym. Tim Boza, who the Red Raider at uh, 215, currently ranked number five. Zane Severin ranked number eight, five and eight, wrestling each other. Boza's season just getting underway, nine and three, where Severin's got 32 under his belt. Wrestling is 33rd. Brown with an escape ties that match 1 1. Crown over. Going to get the victory. Up next is Maher and Ziegler. Tim Boza taking on Zane Severin. That one still scoreless in the second period. <clears throat> Maher 14 and 3 on this season. Ziegler 10 and 11. Brown with the takedown. He leads 3 1 here on your north mat. And Brown will get the win by fall over Ziegler. And that will wrap up the North Mat. Championship mat tonight, I think, is going to be the South Mat. We'll double check that. Consolation Championship on your North Mat. And 5th and 6th will be back in your auxiliary gym. They're at 215 back there. I believe these are the last two matches of this round. Give Eb Emmett Maher the victory. He's 15 and three on the season. He will wrestle for the Constellation Championship against Brown. That should be a fun one. Ziegler will wrestle against his teammate, Kerner. That'll wrap things up here from the main gym. For a bit, we're going to go to sponsors. We'll be back after a word from the people that bring you coverage. Oh, they are going to go right in. Hmm. So fifth and sixth will be in the Ox Gym. They're not going to wait as it is 6.30. They're going to continue to roll. And the championship match will be on the south mats. We'll go ahead and adjust our labels.
Let's go to the mats. Go to the mats. And here we go. Just like that, we're rolling right into our championship match. Championship match tonight is number two and three in the state. This is Rylan Robbins of the Winter Warriors. Comes in with a record of 24 and four, taking on number three ranked Judd Hansen. Rylan, an eighth grader. Judd, a sophomore. Judd, 30 and two on the season. One of those losses being to, maybe both of those losses are to Robbins as they faced each other in a triangular and in the McCook Central Montrose tournament. Mild scramble there. We're going to come in and focus on the championship match much as we can. For fifth and sixth, that's Maxwell Anderson, an eighth grader, taking on Keenan Snyder, an eighth grader. Anderson of Lemon McIntosh, 13 and 12. Keenan Snyder, Cannon Snyder, 9 and 11, eighth grader. That one's going to be stalemated. River Larson. Trails Gatlin Cordes, number four and seven in the state there. River Larson, 20 and six, he's a freshman. Taking on Gatlin Cordes, a freshman from Phillip, 26 and seven, Cordes ranked fourth, Larson seven. on a collision course for the semis. They're shelving that ankle up high and still not able to collect the takedown. How did he ever stay out of that? Now Robin's working on
Hansen in deep again. Same situation. In deep on that single. Robbins countering. It's a rolling schedule for fifth and sixth. So I'll stay focused out here on third and fourth. And obviously on the championship match. Cordes does lead 2-0 over in that consolation championship match. Robbins forcing on that front half at 113 in your consolation for fifth and sixth place match at the end of the first here championship match. They've won 113 in the Ox Gym. 113. Birchfield and Wagner. Edge of the mat wrestling. Robbins is going to try pulling him in. You can see Hansen slowly trying to slide out. Robbins says, okay, let's go out. Let's come back and do it again. This one, tight. Championship match. Scoreless between number two and three in the state. Both have had opportunities. Both with different attacks at different times. River Larson going to be defeated by Gatlin Cordes. Number four in the state defeats number seven by a score of six to two. And Robbins gets the victory. That scoreboard not keeping up. I thought it was zero zero. My apologies. That's crazy. How track will not score. Done it a couple times today. Third and fourth place match coming up at 106B. Dane Johnson, Burke Gregory going to take on Jackson Trent. Championship match at 106B. It's going to be Easton Roush taking on Memphis Morgan. Roush, eighth grader, 16 and 14. Morgan, a freshman, 11 and 15. And track still has it caught up. There they found the match. Easton Roush of Potter County. 
Memphis Morgan of Custer. You can see their records there. And Dinek Skeep. Roush leading this match, 3-2. Roush from the Battlers. Taking a look at your ox, Jim. Trevor Lashowitz and Hudson Peters wrestling for 5th and 6th at 120 in the ox gym and Hudson Peters leads by a score of 2-0. Dean Johnson, the 12 and 14 7th grader, leading Jackson France of Custer by a score of 2-0. Look at this defensive pin coming almost. Roush with a 5-2 lead. A minute to go, second period. And that's how this match will go to the third period. Roush leading Morgan seven to three.
Horgan to blast double. Caught Roush adjusting his headgear. He's going to work this edge of the mat. Roush will go down. He leads 7-3. Final 30 seconds ticking away. Your third and fourth place match at 113 has started. As Roush gets a reversal. Corbin Palsma, 20 and 11 at Bonhomme Avon, taking on Rook and Robbins, the seventh grader from the Winter Warriors. He comes in with a record of 25 and 9. Next up, Nicholas Schlachter, number two in the state from Potter County, taking on number three, Trant. Tyler Trant of Custer. The junior, Schlachter, the senior. Schlachter comes in 16 and 6 on the season. Tyler Trant, 31 and 4. 35 matches already this year for the Custer Wildcat. Robbins leads in his match 2-0. Nice attack there on the edge of the mat. Still scoreless, 49 seconds to go here, first period. Trant with the attack, Schlachter using that length. Gonna stretch him out, get to that ankle and defend. Nicholas first back to center circle. Short time. And here's the end of the first period. Scoreless. <coughs> at 117. Trant will go down. I didn't see if he had choice. Schlachter will cover.
Robbins now trails Palsma by a score of three to two. And we'll come back center circle. Robbins ties it up 3-3. Three, three. Schlock will cover Trance. Under a minute to go in that third and fourth place match. Schlachter looking for a right out here under 30 seconds to go. Second period. Robbins in on a single. Can he finish it and get the victory in that third and fourth place match? And Robbins gets the takedown without, with under 30 to go. Now leads five to three. We go to the third period. Schlachter goes down after writing out Trance. Knee slide there by Schlachter. And they'll come back center circle. Schlachter first back, first down. Robbins gets the victory, 5-3. It's going to be a caution there. Up next, Preheim and Stewie for third and fourth at 120. Schlotter can't get away. Up easily. There's the first point scored, and that's by Nicholas Schlachter, ranked number two, Tyler Trant, ranked number three. Trant with a nice attack. Can he finish? Schlachter using that length. I keep talking about it. Stretching out his opponent, using those long legs. You get in, your arms get to mid-thigh, and then you're up on the hips, and he's on your ankles. one nothing in the score. Championship match. Trance, the attack, under 23 to go. Is this a one nothing victory over Trant for number two, Nicholas Schlachter, or does number three, Tyler Trant, come from behind to get the victory? It's going to be a 3 nothing victory for Nicholas Schlachter on your championship mat.
113 pound place for the stage before. 113 pound place for the So, take a look at your 120 pound championships. For third and fourth, that's Colton Preheim, 14 and 16 for the Parker Pheasants. Taking on Lance Stewie, the Potter County Battler. Junior, 15 and 11, and he leads by a score of 4 to 0. Your championship match, well, that is number two, Trey Weiss. Now 120, taking on Tucker Bow, number six for the Philip, well, I gotta say Badland Brawlers. Weiss, 33 and three, Tucker Bow, 28 and six. Stewie, that 4 nothing lead. Still waiting for first points be between Weiss and Bo. Now, <coughs> as we talked about, 605 has done several features. One of them being on Tucker Bo and his hearing impairment. Can't hear anything when he is out on the mat. Probably a good thing. Crowd doesn't affect him. Time is the big thing. He's kind of understand how much time's left. But it's just a matter of going out and wrestling. Tucker Bow nearly gets the takedown. Mad scramble, and there's going to be no points scored there. So that's a scoreless first period. With choice, Weiss going to go down. Tucker Bow will cover. There is a reversal for Trey Weiss. He leads little head lever and we'll come back center circle hard return Tucker never quits coming and the beauty is Trey Weiss he never stops wrestling either Two nothing, Weiss with the lead. Weiss ranked number two. So we'll go to the third and final period. 
underway at 126 in your consolation championship match. We'll get that set here in a second as soon as track pulls it up. This one, 2 nothing. That's Asher Peterson, the 16 and 12 senior from the Badland Brawlers, taking on Weston Birma, Bonhomme Scotland Avon. No, no Scotland in there. Bonhomme Avon, the 11 and 7 8th grader. Gonna stop that for being potentially dangerous. Minute 10 to go here, third period. Weiss with that reversal has made it hold up so far in this battle of two versus six in the championship. Oh my. Ashton Keller suffers a loss to Madison's Caleb Hodges up in Madison today. Four nothing, Weiss with the lead. And you can see he's short time. We'll give you the tapper. Under 10 to go, but Tucker Bow wrestled. Great match for number six. Number two, Trey Weiss, victorious over Tucker Bow. Weiss goes to 34 and three. Tucker Bow will fall to 28 and seven. We'll move on to Brozick and Yankee. Number one, Maxton Brozick, and number 10, Yankee of Lee Deadwood, the gold digger. And Brozick snaps in on that single. It'll be a three-point near fall for Maxson. Will lead 5-0 as he covers Drew Yonke. The junior for the Gold Diggers comes in 9-5, and five, but getting a lot of respect in the polls. Number 10 coming out of Region 4. going to be blood time. We're going to refresh track wrestling. Flying along back in the auxiliary gym now as they're at 144. Brock Kotelik of Bonhomme Avon leading 4 nothing over Judd Blair. Currently at 126 in your consolation championship, Weston Birma. 4 nothing lead over Asher Peterson. Asher will probably, maybe, pop into those rankings next week. Be interesting to see if he does make a move. Birma, unranked for Bonhomme Avon. Excuse me, had to sneeze terrible. I'd have blown your speakers out with that one.
Max leading 4-0, trying to force that over, getting a count. But you see the tapper in this scenario. Seven zero gonna be your score as we go to the second period. Max will go down. We will bring you the close up of the start. Birma still leading four zero. Clasping hands in a reversal. That'll make your score 10 to 0. takes a peek at the clock. Sees there's plenty of time to go. <laughs> and back to work he, he rolls. Kotelik leading Blair 9-0 in that 144 pound 5th and 6th place match in the Ox Gym. just sitting there trying to survive. To nothing, Brozik with the lead in a one versus ten matchup. You can see the tapper. And there is short time. No time, actually. Ten nothing, Brozik. Jackson call at one thirty-two, ranked number three. Going to take on Gage Anderson, number five in the Consolation Championship at 132. That's number three versus five. Now Max going to go takedowns here. 12-1 lead. Max with a 16-2 lead. He'll make it 16-3 and look for a takedown to end this one. And that's how this one will end. 18-3, your final. As Max Brozik wrestles in his last quarterback club invitational, he will be the champion. 
20, 24 to 126 pounds, 18 to 3. Up next, number two, Karsten Lotek. He will be taken on at 132. From Custer, Riley Scott, number two versus number four. Lotek 23 and 3. He's in that red singlet. Scott comes in with a record of 32 and 5. He's in that black, purple, and gold singlet. Good one over on your North Mat, Consolation Championship Mat. As Anderson, ranked number five, leads four to two over number three, Jackson Call. Lotek driving with that fireman's. Low tech crawling back up underneath. Yeah. No point scored. Wow. Sometimes it's just better to let the kids do the talking on the mat. Four two in your consolation match. That is the end of the first period. In your 132-pound championship, Low Tech with choice, ranked number two, will go down. Anderson, now a 6-2 lead over number three, Jackson Call. Low Tech with the escape. He now leads 1-0. See him do that duck under, beautiful. Comes around for the takedown. Give low tech one for the escape, two for a takedown. Now leads 3-0. We'll come back center circle. Three nothing low tech. Anderson. He leads 6-2 as we come in tight here on this referee's position. This is what you call a head lover. You get that head right in the armpit, hand out on the wrist, and you just derive. <laughs> Low tech using it very effectively. Eventually that could become a half Nelson. Scott will Granby out and get a point three one. Low tech tries that high crotch duck under. This time Scott waiting for it. Defended nicely. Short time here in period two. 
We're going to come back. Both wrestlers will be on their feet. You can see the tappers out there. Keep an eye on him so you can see the end of the period. And that's how this period will end. So Scott will go down, trailing 3-1. It'll be a tough ride for low tech. In all likelihood, 3-2. With the Scott escape, and it'll come down to who gets the last takedown. Strap it on the ankle bands over on your Consolation Championship match. Spencer Sargent, ranked number nine for the Stanley County Buffaloes. He is 21 and 8. Taking on Michael Even, ranked number 10 at 144. Down at 138 this week, he's 25 and 9. A couple of juniors, nice seasons rolling. Scott here would love a reversal, trailing 3 1. He's got that inside ankle. There is the reversal. We're not at 3 3. So low tech. Going to try to get a reversal, and he is. Does he get reversal and back points? Well, it's 5 3. We're back to where we were. Even a takedown in the first period. He leads by a score of 2-0. Scott has his escape with 20 seconds to go. And will come back center circle. You can see the tappers out there. It's 5-4. Lotech will defend to the edge of the mat and get the 5-4 championship. Number two, Karsten Lotech over number four, Riley Scott. Sergeant trailing 3-0 to Michael Even in your auxiliary gym. They're at 165, Dylan Boosman up 10-0 over legend Benedict of winner. And here we go, it's 1.32. This is a big one. As, or 1.38, this is Carson Kieser. Number three in the state, taking on number six, Tyler Beardsma. Going to go to 144 on your Consolation Championship mat. Lathan Gabriel, the 16 and 11 Badland Brawler, taking on Leighton Sander, ranked number 12 for the Custer Wildcats. Kieser going to hit that Kelly dump. 
Number three versus number six. Keezer will get his takedown. He leads 2 0 at the end of the first period. Nathan Gabriel and Leighton Sander scoreless. Actually, I think this is Churchman. Churchman. If my friends from Bonhomme have gotten me, <laughs> they've tried and tried and tried. There's just no train in me. Keezer with the takedown after the escape now leads 5 0. You can see he's got that wing. His feet and returned. Churchman with the cradle. He's got the reversal. You saw the shaking, no back points. Trying again. Keys are trying to come out the back door. No back points. Churchman with the Reversal though has slashed that lead to five to two. We go to the third and final period, number three and six in the state. Church Monk gonna go down. Keezer says, No, we're going on our feet. You can have your point. Five three. Churchman with a nice attack. He will tie this match at five. Still 5-5 championship match. A minute to go, just over a minute for Kieser and Churchman. Six five. Kieser with the lead.
Huskies are in on that single. Swims and collapses the hip. Does not have the two yet. Here comes Churchma trying to come around the corner. Keys are going to the double. And they go out of bounds. Short time. See the tapper out there? Keezer trying to collect a takedown, won't get it. Has been cautioned for stalling. Keep that in mind. Keezer's going to have to toe the line and shoot. And that's it. Final going to be 6 5. Number three, Carson Keezer over. Number six, Tyler Churchma of Monhome Avon. Go to number 144, number two, Miles Renner of Lee Deadwood. <laughs> he's got another favorite. He's a favorite of mine, and he's got another favorite, Reich and Oral. These two towed the line at uh, the Mid Dakota Monster, and it was fast and furious. I know. Riken wants another shot at this. This one could get explosive. Both of these two uh, like to throw. There's Renner horsing that over. Get the takedown. Both kids, I think, lost their head gears there. It's going to be a fall for Kai Rush. Now 150, he'll take third place. Official time, one minute, unofficial time, one minute, 26 seconds. So he gets the victory over Clayton Pankratz of the Parker Pheasants. Two one here is Oral, has an escape. And there you can see Renner. He'll be fast and furious with his moves once he sees it. He hits it hard. Second period. Green with choice. Oral will defer. Renner will go down. Wrestling for third and fourth now. As we clean up track real quick. Renner with the escape. Makes it 
Kale Hill trailing Jackson Saba. That a 157-pound consolation championship match. Yeah, 157. Oh, Oral, nearly a bad step there. Saba, Jackson ranked seventh, and Kiel Hill unranked. And Renner gonna get another takedown. Last state champion out of Lee Deadwood, according to 605 Sports, Jason Schweitzer in 2003. Dill, or, uh, Miles trying to end the drought for the Gold Diggers. Don't know a lot about Jason Schweitzer, but I do know a lot about Justin Hardy went on to wrestle at North Carolina in D1. Oral with an escape makes it 5-2. See the tapper run out for short time. You want tidbits? Go to the wrestling notebook. All kinds of great tidbits coming out of 605 Sports. Oral goes down. Trails 5-3. A lot different wrestling match than the last time these two hooked up at the Mid-Dakota Monster. Oral first back to the circle. Miles Renner will cover with that 24-3 record. Oral 28-9. Saba leading Kale Hill, three to one. Saba will get the fall on Kale Hill. He is your consolation champion at 157. Third and fourth place match falling. Matt fall or taken off, getting ahead. Your fifth and sixth place matches at 215. Going to 165 here on your consolation championship match and your championship matches at 144. They've been a little tighter. World trailing Renner 5-3. Renner looked like he was going to fall off the top. World had a chance for a reversal. Now he's got that cradle hooked up. Renner going to be cautioned for stalling. At 165, it is Colton Brady, 14 and 6 for the Stanley County Buffaloes, taking on Hunter Coons in a rematch of their first or first round match today. Colton Brady pins Hunter Coons, led 6 nothing and got the pin. Here you're seeing Oral trying to get the escape, cannot get it. Gonna update track for you quickly as everything's happening all at once. They go out of bounds, and Oral's going to get caution for that one. Renner covers. Under 10 to go. Oral trying, gets one, and that's all he'll get. 5-4 going to be your final, but Riken Oral represents himself very well after, as compared to the semi at the Mid-Dakota Monster. 
Miles Renner does not disappoint. 25 and 3. As he tries to become the first state champion for Lee Deadwood since 2003. Coons and Brady scoreless. Hundred and fifty pound championship match underway. Number one, Riley Roberts. Number two, Riker Peterson. Our only one versus two. Thought we might have a couple of them today. Actually, I take that back. We'll, we'll have another one at two fifteen. I thought we might have maybe three. Riker thirteen and two. Back in the lineup for the uh, Badland Brawlers. Taking on Roberts, 26 and 5, number one for the Wagner Red Raiders. Peterson in deep on that single. Can he finish? Roberts, one of those kids that's very funky and hard to close out. Colton Brady and Coons at it again. Brady with a three-point near fall. Roberts, nice head tap attack. Goes low single. There is the takedown for Roberts. Coons with an escape, 3-1. That one in the second period. Those two kids, they like to throw. Keep an eye on that one. Trying to get a reversal. Roberts staying on that ankle. Does not give it up. Choice is Roberts. He'll defer. Peterson says down. Coons and Brady at it again. 3-1. <laughs> that one in the final seconds of the second period. Told you to watch out for the throw. Brady stepped on the outside line. Nice throw, though. <laughs> I mean, Colton Brady ain't afraid of. Coons brings that out in everybody, though. That, and that's no knock on Hunter. He's just aggressive physical. He, he's like alpha wrestler. And he makes alpha wrestlers out of everybody else. Two nothing. Roberts with the lead. Brady gonna be cautioned for stalling, for backing out, which means he's gotta gotta get in there and battle. It's three two. Roberts so long trying to get that cheap tilt does not get it but he's still got that uh, seat belt hooked up Coons 
Now here's Riker, almost getting his hips up and over. And that means your auxiliary gym is officially done for the evening. With that being said, we're going to make some quick corrections here. Can't imagine there being blood in that match over here, can you? Roberts now a 5-1 lead. Roberts with under a minute to go, leading Riker Peterson by a score of 7-0 to zero and looking for more. Colton Brady gets the victory 8-2. Riker Peterson ranked number 2, Roberts number 1. Roberts got to feel good coming out of this tournament with that championship. A 10-0 victory over Riker Peterson. That's Riley's 32nd match of the year and Riker's 16th. We'll see come a month from now if anything has changed. We'll clean up track quick. Get back to your championship matches. This is number three, Kale Krauser of uh, Badland Brawlers taking on Andrew Even. Even checks in. Um, well, he's not ranked. Is that correct? Thought he was. Is not. Little blood time already there. 
Oh, duh. No, even is four. Number three and four in the state in your championship match at 157. In your consolation championship match, that's number five, Colton Volchek, 23 and nine, taking on number eight, Connor Even. A couple of evens out there for the Pheasants. Volchek with the escape. He leads 1 0. Counter even with a huge throw in fall of Volchek. Trailed 1 0. Gets the fall with under 10 seconds to go. Back to your championship. We're underway again. Krauser with first takedown. Leads Andrew even in the battle of three and four here at 157 by a score of two to zero. And 190 in your third and fourth place championship match. Quinn Moon, ranked number nine, 21 and nine for the Badland Brawlers, taking on number six, Bonhomme Avon Cavalier, Isaiah Crownover. 23 and 4 on the season. Krauser gives even an escape. Gets the takedown. Leads 4 to 1. As he's checking time. Looks like there's going to be more blood time. Krauser defers. Andrew even chooses down. Second period underway. Oh, nope. It's going to be a jump there on Kale. Scores 4-2. That is what you call a reshot. As Andrew even took the initial shot, was stuffed, and Kale comes back, and he will collect a takedown off the miss. That'll make your score 6 2 in the championship in this three versus four matchup. Actually, we should have had four number ones versus two. Twos. Burke Blasius didn't wrestle today. Him and Ryder Bailey, one and two here today. Parker Nome didn't wrestle. That's the other one we missed at 190. Hope everyone is healthy. And Andrew's knee, not good.
taking a look over at Crown Over and Moon. That one scoreless. Crown Over six now working that wing. Chicken Wing Iowa State. Wing State can't get it to tip over. This looks like it could be a medical forfeit. As Andrew is really struggling with that knee. 25 and 3 on the year. Kale Krauser 30 and 2. Moon and Crown over. They go to the third period. That one scoreless. Say that in Isaiah. Trying to work a Peterson roll. If he hooks that, those hands, nope, cannot. And there is the reversal for Crown Over. He will take a two to nothing lead. Even going to try to continue. Krauser going to put him on his feet. And that'll make your score. Eight to four. Give the victory to Crownover at 90. We're going to 215 in our consolation championship matches. It'll be Boza and Fitch. That is taking a look at the most recent rankings. Fitch ranked number four. Picks up a couple losses to Weeman here in the last two days. Taking on Tim Boza, ranked number five for the Wagner Red Raiders. Wagner putting out some good kids. Breen, Low Tech, Roberts, Boza. Ranked fairly high in the rankings. Let's see how that translates at the end of the year. Even in on that leg. Krauser with an escape takes a 9 to 4 lead. What a head pass.
getting to the blood time, everything slows down. Blood time on both mats. Action resumes in the championship match. That is the end of the period. Krauser going to be your 157 pound champion. 9 4 over Andrew Even. Rank number four. Up next at 65, it will be Thane Simons, ranked number three. And let's see who we got in the finals. Jet Breen happens to be ranked number two at 157. Two versus three. Breen, 22 and three. Simons, 22 and three. Breen had been down at 57. Thought he would come up. Test the waters at 65 after looking for a title. And Jackson Rimmers, yeah, 157. Put a couple losses on Breen, I believe. So he's back up testing 65. As I said, kids at 65 will test 50. Or at 57 will test 50 and 65. There's Simons. Giving up first takedown to Breen. Two nothing. Simons going to come out on top of this scramble. For sure. Now that's not a reversal. Going to give Simon or Stain Simons, Simons, we'll call him Simon. Going to give him an escape, but it looked like he had the reversal. Jensen Fitch in the third period, leading 3-0 over Timboza. Two one at the end of your first period. We go two. Simons, Thane Simons, with choice. He's going to go down. That's final. Just Jensen Fitch going to be your champion at uh, two fifteen. Thane tried to come around the corner, and uh, Chat said, no, you're not. 
Rips that arm back. Two eighty five teammates, well, not teammates, Emmett Maurer of Lemon McIntosh taking on Kate Brown of Burt Gravy, Gregory. And what's cool is Maurer is wearing the McIntosh wrestling singlet. Sorry about that on the championship. I was peeking and got caught. Two two, Dane Simons and Jet Breen. <laughs> Scoreless first period between Maher and Cade Brown. 15 and 3, 26 and 8, Maurer and Braun, Brown, respectively. 2 2 in your championship match between Thane Simons and Jet Breen. I'm going to call Thane Th Simons Thimons. I guess I got to call Jet Breen. Jet Breen. Jet Breen. <laughs> Look at that. Cradle by Maurer looking to finish. He's got to lock that leg as Brown is swinging it. When he brings that leg back, he needs to catch it and to hook it up. Can't finish, it leads three nothing. Go to the third period between Dean Simons and Breen. Breen goes down with the advantage of needing just one. It's close to getting two. Brown with an escape. He does get the two. So Breen leads by a score of 4 2. And Simons with the escape. Jebreen leading 3 to 2. Brown hits a headlock, trailing three to one. He's trying to get the fall here at 285 over Maher. And he will get it. Breen with the lead attacking. 4-3, countered by a wizard here by Thane Simons. Using that weight advantage to lean on Breen. Short time, 22 seconds to go. Under 10 to go. Simon's got to come up with a throw. Cannot. 4-3 going to be your final. Jet Breen ranked number... Well, where is Jet? Ranked 2 at 57. Comes up and beats number 3. Thane Simon's. Up next at uh, 75... Sixth ranked Kellen Brozik will take on second ranked Ryder Bailey. Yeah. 
Bailey with that headlock. Tough spot when you don't feel it coming and Ryder Bailey likes to throw. Kellen gonna come through. He's gonna give up five. Oof. We're gonna see if they're not going to do uh, the other mat. What we are going to do is chop this down, give you a little better picture. And Bailey will finish Brozik number two over number six. Vicious. Wake up. So Gannon Knebel gonna take on Jet Eklund in your championship match. Championship. I was getting ready to give you a, a cool shot, and they decided to end this baby. Knable leading 2 1. Teammates, that's in Shelbourne. And Derek Feninga will wrestle for the championship at 285. That one getting pulled up over here on your north mat. That is not a consolation championship. That is actually a championship. Philip, or excuse me, winner, leading the team title with 223 and a half. Philip with 187 and a half in second. Bonhomme Avon in third with 171. Custer now in fourth with 161. Those are your top four.
presented by uh, Price Winners Report. Nabel and Eklund, 3-3. Three, three. Shelbourne and Feninga, 0-0. Zero, zero. There is a reversal. Stetson leads 2-0. Glenn leads Knabel by a score of four to three. And Shelbourne two nothing over Fanenga. They go to the third and final period. Shelbourne and Fanenga. Two nothing Shelbourne. Track not updating. Eklund going to have to fight off an attack here by Knabel. Short time. Eklund gets those hips buried and will fight it off. That'll be the end of the period. 4-3, Knabel will go down. And Shelbourne going to get the fall. So we give you these changes. And we're going to have to crop that. It will come back in your matches here in a second. We'll give it a second to update. Four four, your match score.
Nabel does get the escape, 4-4. Four, four. actually going to get the victory 4-3 in this 190-pound championship. Number one and two in the States. Uh, keep your eyes on this one. Caleb Rickenbaugh and Levi Weeman coming up. We go to 215. Should be fun. screen here. Number one and two in the state, going to close it out. Levi Weeman, 32 and 0. Caleb Rickenbaugh, 30 and 1. First time these two have met this year. Many anticipated this match. Oof, look at that. We went waiting. And look at that. Caleb Rickenbaugh is going to be pinned by Levi Weeman in the much, much anticipated match between one and two. That's how things are going to wrap up here today at the Quarterback Club Invitational. Your final team score is going to be winner winning this with 229 and a half. Badland Brawlers in second with 187 and a half. Bonhomme Avon going to finish third with 171. Custer fourth with 167. We got to wrap things up, get things packed up, and ready for the youth wrestling tournament tomorrow. Want to thank you for all coming along and hanging out here in Winter, South Dakota, with WinterWarriorsLive.com. Y'all have a safe, warm night.